this week's Onion Review. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything here toll-free. And the number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online at freetalklive.com and enjoy all the features that we give to you there. You can also get on the air with us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Feel free to send a contact request first. It will be approved, and then at that point, it'll be easy for you to contact us on Skype tonight. Uh, the us in the studio includes me, Ian. Brett. And Mark. Brett's here courtesy of the School Sucks Project. We'll talk more about that here in a little bit. And uh, lots of interesting stuff on the radar for tonight. There's a kind of a, a slight retrospective. It's not been a year. It's been maybe a quarter of a year in Colorado since... Coming up on a half a year uh, since they've had marijuana legalization, and there's kind of an overview over at policymike.com. How's it going so far with that whole legalization thing? Plus, a proposal. Question. Yeah, a pretty radical uh, proposal for a curfew for teenagers in Baltimore, and more on the way, including Brett's comments on what he calls the victory lap. We'll find out what that's all about here in a moment. There's news, uh, sort of somewhat breaking news out of Florida. I initially heard the story on Peace News Now last night with Derek J, and I thought this was pretty outrageous. Um, as of yesterday, the news was that a mother was, or a father, I guess, was going to have on court order uh, his son circumcised, three-year-old son circumcised. Now, mom has gotten the Fourth District Court of Appeals to intervene. The story's from BrowardPalmBeach.com. Heather Hieronymus of Boynton Beach and Dennis Nebus of Boca Raton had a child together in 2010 and entered into a parenting agreement more than a year later. The agreement clearly stated that the father would be responsible for scheduling and paying for the boy's circumcision. But now that the boy is three and has not yet been circumcised, the mother objects because, as court documents explain it, the procedure is, quote, not medically necessary, and she did not want to have the party's son undergo requisite general general anesthesia for fear of death, unquote. General anesthesia can result in death. I mean, you know, they. I don't think they give uh, newborns uh, general anesthesia when giving the um, circumcision that I know of. Um, basically, they just let them holler. They strap them down and let them holler. Um, whereas a three-year-old, you're talking about, you're talking about somebody who can talk. According to the story here, the boy is not yet uh, has not yet been circumcised. Judge Jeffrey Gillen, however, last week ordered that there's no reason for the parties or that the parties shouldn't abide by the parenting agreement, and that the father can go ahead and schedule the procedure. However, Hieronymus's attorney says, putting aside what they agreed to, if you're going to enforce this contract, you have to look at what's the best interest of the child. The best interest of the child should always trump any such agreement, said the attorney. Sinatra said that a pediatric urologist testified at a hearing and was asked what he would do in such a situation, and the urologist said he would not circumcise the boy at this age. However, the judge's order claims the urologist also testified that, quote, penile cancer occurs only in uncircumcised males, which is untrue, and uncircumcised males have a higher risk of HIV infection than circumcised males, which is debatable. Hieronymus' case has drawn support from anti-circumcision activists around the country who argue the foreskin is a useful part of the human body and that men should decide for themselves whether to circumcise when they're old enough to research it for themselves and to consent. Now, I happen to agree to that particular perspective. I think that parents shouldn't be forcing uh, bloody medical procedures on their kids unless they're absolutely medically necessary, and I don't consider uh, circumcision to be medically necessary at all. However, you also get into the situation where there is a parenting agreement in play here where, okay, so you don't like the idea of circumcision, but this lady agreed to the uh, the idea of circumcision in the in the past. She sounds like she's changed her mind on that, but in the past, she did get into a contract with the father, and that contract 
specified that he would be in charge of this. So should the contract in this case override the fact that this is a ridiculous procedure and completely unnecessary or that mom changed her mind later on? Now doctors are saying, look, this guy is he this little guy is too old uh, for this procedure. What do you think the right way to approach this is? Well, as far as the contract is concerned, you know, you'd like to think that people are concerned that both parents anyway are concerned with what's best for the child. Right. I'd so like to think so. if the information and the circumstances have changed, you'd like to think that the party expecting the contract to be automatically upheld might look at new information or a new situation and say, OK, well, I could I could let go of this contract. But I'm guessing if this is, you know, a news story, we don't live in that perfect world right. where that's being said. Well, I think that if you're going to circumcise, there is a uh, a sort of acceptable time window to do that. Um, if you're going to have to put the kid under general anesthetic, I, c- I consider that to be a major operation. And what's it for? What's the reason for that major operation at this point? Maybe daddy was circumcised, so he feels like it's something that has to be done. Well, to prepare for penile cancer, you know, maybe, maybe the chances of having uh you know, penile cancer go up if you're not circumcised, and maybe the chances of uh, some sexually transmitted diseases go up if you're not circumcised. But what are the what are the odds based on this child's at you know ethnicity, where he lives, you know these these kind of things? I think that you're still just talking about going from a a point zero 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 one percent to a point zero 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 nine percent. I mean, you, you're not talking about a significant risk based on this. And, but there is a risk also to putting the kid under uh, general anesthetic, and I don't think that it's worth is it. Is it worth it? Yeah. A little bit more. Circumcision has become controversial in recent years. There's evidence that circumcision was performed by ancient Egyptians, and Jews believe that Abraham made a covenant with God, getting long life and fertility, if he agreed that all his male descendants would be cut. In the 1800s, circumcision grew popular as a supposed cure for masturbation didn't work, by the way. No, no it doesn't uh, And work. the procedure was popularized in America as hospital births became the norm after World War II, but rates have been steadily declining in the past decade. In Europe, circumcision is considered barbaric and generally not practiced. Hieronymus's lawyer filed an emergency motion with the Fourth District Court of Appeals to get a stay on Gillen's order so they could argue the matter before an appeals court. That has been granted. Hieronymus is a stay-at-home mom and has started a fundraising page To fight the matter, she describes the judge as very pro-circumcision and says, quote, My attorney and I are going to be appealing this decision as neither of us believe it should be a decision left to anyone other than Chase, who is three and a half and fully aware. As a stay-at-home mom, I do not have the funding to be able to fully accomplish this on my own. I'm pleading with fellow intactivists. (laughs) <laughs> That's funny. Parents and all others to help me save my son, his foreskin, his rights, and hopefully other children from allowing the system to make these decisions. I think that this is more something that's going to get f- shared on Facebook rather than uh, something that uh, you know people are going to you know put money behind. That would be my thought. There's some people who are pretty committed to this cause, this intactivism. They, mm-hmm. I guess they're going to have to be, um, because I'm, cir- you know, my son's not circumcised, and I can't say that, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm overwhelmed with the desire to send this lady a bunch of money for um, her legal, f- her legal fight. I mean, I'm sorry for that situation that's going on with her husband. I wish she hadn't had. This is the problem with having kids with somebody you're you're not willing to make compromises with. Mm. Well, I mean, you're a man with a lot of irons in the fire, for sure, and there's uh, people who have more time and resources and thought to dedicate this. They're certainly out there. Uh, This has become a very big issue, and it makes me wonder, you know, where does the pressure really come from? And uh, the article hints at it. Obviously, circumcision was uh, a religious thing originally. Okay. Now, let's step away from this and just talk about the state for a minute. Okay. And trust me, I'll, I'll bring it back. Right. But things become part of a culture or things become institutionalized and then it's very hard for them to go away. Sure. Right. So the state itself, probably the, the grandest example, you know, maybe there was an event thousands of years ago where a man saw another man and saw that that other man had some things that he wanted. So he hit him with a rock and he took those things. And then he said, I got to find out uh, a story that makes this okay. And from there, over time, we got the state. That's the state, yeah. And 
as time went by, they found new justifications for the state. And I can pick that we up will in a co- minute. I'll come back to that thought here in a moment. And your call's welcome. By the way, she's raised uh, $3,600 of the $5,000 she is looking to raise. We'll link to this on our Facebook. More coming up. Gold Bond presents Shaquille O'Neal. So I'm hanging out with my Gold Bond buddies, and they're like, Shaq, Shaq, great job with the Gold Bond powder spray. People love it. So I'm soaking in the good vibes, kicking off my shoes. Next thing I know, they're coming out with a new foot powder spray. Boom. Shaq strikes again. Gold Bond No Mess Powder Spray cools and refreshes your body, and new Gold Bond Foot Powder Spray has two times the odor-absorbing powders to do the same for your feet. Stay cool with Gold Bond. Kid, if something in this facility breaks, bends, or bursts, granger has got our back. 20 cases of disc springs from Granger.com, new rotary encoder ordered on Granger's mobile app, a dozen splash goggles from the local Granger branch. What more could you want in life? Granger has over 1 million products for all our facilities' needs. 1 million. That's a 1 followed by six zeros, kid. Everything we need whenever we need it. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com, or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today, April 21st, 2014, gold opened at $12.98.80. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for $13.46, $6.73 for a half ounce, or $3.36.50 for a quarter ounce. That's $13.46, $6.73. And 336.50. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. They have to pass a law that all the guns that are currently there have to disappear in a puff of smoke. (laughs) That's what they have to do. Oh, wait, you mean the bad guys won't actually give up their firearms when the authorities come around to confiscate them? It doesn't really matter that they won't give up their firearms because we're going to pass a law. Oh, because we pass a law, they'll just all disappear. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, it's just amazing how powerful laws are. How just laws aren't a bunch of dumb crap written on paper. They actually do something. (laughs) It's really, really stupid. What will be stupid is if they vote for it. Yeah, yeah, if if they're taking away guns. (laughs) You you know, these criminals with the guns are going to kill people. Yeah, they already are, apparently. And you don't have a weapon of your own. (laughs) You're just as good as dead. Once the laws go into effect, that there shouldn't be any weapons anymore because then they know that the good people don't have weapons. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. You want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too. Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you want here, toll-free at 855-450-FREE. Circumcision. A lot of people have some strong opinions about this issue. Are you one of those folks? You're welcome to comment. 
the toll-free number again, 855-450-FREE. Uh, you know, we still have the 30 things to stop doing to yourself. We might get back into that. It's kind of our weekly thing with Brett here from School Socks Project. Uh, the toll-free number again is 855-450-FREE. And you've heard of shinybadges.com. Well, check out their brand new causes tab. They uh, have certain items when you buy them. There's a donation that will be given to Worthy Liberty Projects. So, for instance, you can buy the Silk Road pin, which looks awesome. I'm looking forward to getting one uh, at the Porcupine Freedom Festival because I know Dobby from Shiny Badges is going to be selling them there in person. And uh, you buy the Silk Road pin, and some money will go to the Ross Ulbricht Legal Defense Fund at freeross.org. You can buy the Bitcoin Not Bombs t-shirt and contribute to Hoodie the Homeless 2014. There are others, the Cop Block badge, which is really awesome. It says, badges don't grant extra rights. It has a unique serial number on it, like a badge number. I've got one of those. They're very cool uh, stuff over at shinybadges.com. Just click the Causes tab. You can get some really cool Liberty products that will start a conversation with your neighbors and support causes you believe in and you get a free gift when you pay with bitcoin at shinybadges.com so brett you were uh, beginning the process of kind of explaining something certainly yeah so what i was saying in the last segment is that things begin usually for bad reasons or like lack circumcision <laughs> ignorance lack of information but then if they become part of the culture and they become in themselves an institution they continue and people are comfortable with them because or people, it's always been that way or people are benefiting from them maybe not so much in the case of circumcision as oh, it's a well somebody's getting paid yeah sure okay I'm a doctor Okay, there might be a bit of a circumcision uh, there's a, special interest there's for a sure. Circumcision industrial complex, certainly. It's probably a bit fairly expensive to so, perform that procedure. Uh, you, you you do um, tutoring, right? I I'm trying to get away from it, but I still do a little you, bit. You do it, and when you sell um, parents uh, the tutoring package, would you rather sell them the basic tutoring package or the deluxe tutoring package? Oh, the deluxe. Right, and that's really what it comes down to. The circumcision isn't by any means what keeps the doctor uh, going, but it might pay his green fees for the next day. Sure, sure, absolutely. So as far as the uh, the state example is concerned. Man hits another man with a rock, takes his stuff. Sooner or later, if this behavior continues, we have to make up a story to make this okay. So uh, at first, it has all of these sort of supernatural justifications. I am a god. I am the god. And as people get more reasonable over the centuries, it's, well, I talk to God. I got kind of a personal relationship. He tells me what to do. I do the will of God. Mm -hmm. The scientific revolution happens. They're like, okay. At no point do the uh, people in power say, look at the egg all over our face. We were wrong. We were tricking you. We're sorry. The justifications just continue. No, it's not the will of God. It's the will of the people. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, we're here for you. You know, they'll get every once in a while they get a little bump. Like somebody will write a book that says the wisdom of crowds. You know, and say, yeah, yeah, democracy. We generally make the right decisions. But in fact, uh, circumcision it starts from some guy named Graham and some guy named Kellogg's. Yeah, those guys, uh, Graham crackers and Kellogg's. Well, they popular. Cereal. They helped popularize it. They didn't start it. They did, certainly didn't start it. But uh, in this country, they certainly made it a big deal. Yeah, they were the ones who wanted to stop masturbation. It's all about religion for them. So then it continues. Back to circumcision, it starts with this uh, unreasonable justification, by today's standards unreasonable anyway. By the time we move into the very Victorian 1800s, it's about people restraining themselves from sexual pleasure. But the institution, the practice, already has some momentum when the religious justification starts to seem more watered down or unreasonable, they come up with something new. So now, obviously, we're beyond masturbation into reducing risk of penile cancer or HIV transmission. But it was just a question that I was positing. Where did the momentum for these types of things really come from? And I think if we dig, we can find that they usually go back pretty far. Well, in this case, they certainly do. Uh, the Kellogg and Graham characters, I remember watching a story on Penn and Teller's BS about them and this history that they have. Of course, it wasn't just circumcision. They had a whole anti-self-pleasuring agenda. Oh, it was very popular once, yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, that's, that's where it must have come from, the kind of the puritanical roots of the United States. And that message resonated with, uh, with parents out there who wanted to prevent their children from the horrors of masturbation that they themselves had likely gone through at some point in their lives and felt very, very guilty about. And they figured they could uh, save their children from those uh, terrible desires and it also, yeah, it brings up this broader question of how much uh, puritanism is in us. 
You know, like maybe maybe there's not a lot in you, but I can remember times in my life where I've said, I'm a hard worker. You know, that is totally the Puritan, the Puritan work ethic. Right. Because idle hands, you know, wind up in your (laughs) pants. So a big part of like working hard, uh, working for the for work's sake. That was a Puritan value. Hmm. And that was something that needed to be schooled or acculturated into. uh, I'm sorry, not acculturated, but basically put into through culture. Um, people as they came to America. So we all might have a touch of that. You know, like I, I oh, still sure. say, like, still have this inner monologue that says, did I work 40 hours this week on my stuff? Did I? If you didn't, you're not valuable, right? Well, it's, it, that's the thing. Did I work enough this week to warrant the donations that I'm getting from, you know, School Sucks? Uh, mm-hmm. And, and th- that is this kind of Puritan inner voice because that mm-hmm. was very much schooled into me. Uh, my whole life. It's very much a part of our culture. Your thoughts are welcome here at 855 450 free. By the way, dad, in the story that we were telling you about, this is the parents who are fighting over whether their three year old son should be circumcised. They're fighting in court. Uh, dad hung up when reached by phone for comment. So he doesn't want to talk about the issue right. with the media. Apparently, right now, the courts, uh, the appeals court has put a stay on the circumcision and uh, it has yet to be determined as to whether or not this is going to happen a quick google of what does what is the cost of child circumcision it's some responses say anywhere between three and six hundred dollars perhaps as low as a couple hundred but certainly no lower than that so that's what we're talking about here yeah and i'd like to point out that i think that there are legitimate reasons for uh, circumcision i mean and what is that well, there's a condition called paraphimosis, uh, which I think is probably the best reason for it that I can figure out. And that's a situation where the um, the, uh, the the foreskin is kind of tight um, and doesn't slide mm-hmm. back the way it's supposed to. Okay. Um, and you know, you essentially need some kind. You're going to need some kind of uh, plastic surgery or at the very least some kind of uh, skin stretching regimen that you uh, that you go through on a regular basis and or a circumcision or a circumcision well gotcha. circumcision is plastic surgery i see i mean what else is it i don't know i don't know what defines plastic surgery there's certainly no plastic involved is there <laughs> i don't know anything about it okay all right. Well, is there plastic involved in plastic surgery? If I not, think, why I, do they call it plastic surgery? Uh, it's. I, I think it has to do with plasticity, mm. the moving or stretching of... I could ah, not say. Gotcha. Well, anyway, you can share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And, you know, speaking of kids, there was an interesting story at uh, AOL about a restaurant that is apparently giving a well-behaved kids discount. That's kind of an interesting way for the market to incentivize good behavior in a business. A lot of people don't like kids causing trouble in the the restaurants, and it can be annoying for other customers. Like to see the criteria for well-behaved, though, first. Okay, 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number here, and you can take control of the airwaves. Coming up... 30 things to stop doing to yourself, and we'll talk about the victory lap on Free Talk Live. Springtime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know spring is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, Hoodia and Metabolic Complex, and ProMetabolic, all on sale now. Also, the Anti-Parasite Intestinal Freedom and Warwood Plus Complex, plus Stevia Liquid Sweetener and the Super Enzymes, all on sale for spring at HerbalHealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and click on Spring Specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of FreedomsPhoenix.com get every day. FreedomsPhoenix.com constantly providing the information, the real news about government policies, and the real relationship we all have with the coercive government. The real condition of the economy, innovations in technology, breakthroughs in energy. 
health, and computer science. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media. The corporate media, nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but now there's an alternative. Freedomsphoenix.com. Constant news updates on the issues that affect your life in the most important ways. With liberty and property under constant attack, FreedomsPhoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda, and it encourages the participation of its readers. Go to FreedomsPhoenix.com. That's Freedoms with an S, Phoenix.com. FreedomsPhoenix.com. The revolution between the ears has already happened. Thanks to Bitcoin, LRN.FM is able to provide our free-to-air satellite channel across North and Central America. You can listen to LRN.FM 24-7 via satellite for no monthly cost. Learn more about our satellite channel at sat.lrn.fm. And if you'd like to help us continue to expand, you can send us Bitcoins via the address you'll find under the Bitcoin graphic in the right column of LRN.FM. To learn more about Bitcoin, visit weusecoins.com. That's weusecoins.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Did you know there's a way that could save you thousands on your credit card debt without going to a credit counseling organization or to a debt consolidation company? Did you know this same strategy could help you completely settle all of your debt fast? To unlock this vital information for free and to discover how much you could save, call now, 1-800-928-5394. At FDR, we're not going to explain this strategy on the radio. What we can tell you is we've already helped thousands of Americans resolve over $2 billion in credit card and other unsecured debt. Why not add your debt to that? Again, to unlock this vital information to settling your debt as fast as possible, call 1-800-928-5394. If you're struggling with debt, this may be the answer you've been looking for. Call now. The bigger your debt, the more you need this vital free information. To find out how much money you could save, call 1-800-928-5394. Find out for free at 1-800-928-5394. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up what you want. Just dial toll-free here, 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. You can Skype on into the show at username lrn.fm. Don't forget to join us online at freetalklive.com. Bitcoins are all over the news. I've uh, been hearing a a bit more rumblings about Bitcoin. I think that uh, we're probably poised my opinion, poised for an increase in in value as uh, far as Bitcoins go here. So if you want to get some Bitcoins, the best place to do that is cashintocoins.com. The instructions there are clear. It's easy, safe, fast, completely legal, inexpensive. Customer service is their top priority. You're going to be taken care of every step of the way where you need to be taken care of. All you have to do is get a hold of them. You can use a money order, a check, or a wire transfer I've done this uh, multiple occasions with cashinthecoins.com. I've done lots of business with them. The rates are great there. You can uh, actually get uh, Bitcoins at no cost at all. If you order fewer than $40 worth of Bitcoins, well then, or middle bits or whatever they are, um, you don't have to pay any fee. So it's less than $40 it's free, anything over $40, because they want you to get into Bitcoins. They want you to, to, to begin your saving of Bitcoins, because I think it's going to really be a big deal. Cashintocoins.com. All right, toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Also in the news, uh, Chelsea Manning, that's the form, person formerly known Private as... Private Manning. Bradley Manning, yep. the individual who's now going to prison, probably for most of the rest of their life. Uh, who is in prison for releasing so-called military secrets. And apparently he is uh, now attempting to become a she, is interested in going through uh, a certain treatment to do that, and apparently there there's a decision pending 
I had heard that it was already made, but apparently the decision is pending to transfer. No, no, here it is in the Boston Herald. That apparently the decision has been made. Uh, the, the okay has been given to send her over to a non-military facility. The Pentagon is trying to transfer convicted national security leaker Private Chelsea Manning to a civilian prison where she can get treatment for a gender identity condition. But her lawyer said Wednesday that a move from a military prison would make Manning choose between the treatment and her safety. Two Pentagon officials told the AP on Tuesday that Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel gave the Army approval last month to try to work out a plan to transfer Manning from Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, to a federal prison. Manning entered the Army as a man named Bradley. The officials were not authorized to speak on the record and discuss the matter on condition of anonymity. Manning has been diagnosed with gender dysphoria, the sense of being a woman in a man's body. Civilian prisons can provide treatment, but the Defense Department does not, and transfer would allow her to see if she wants to complete the transformation into being a woman. Transgender people are not allowed to serve in the military. Manning was convicted of sending classified documents to anti-secrecy website WikiLeaks. The soldier has asked for hormone therapy to be able to live as a woman. The request was first by a transgender military inmate, and or the first, rather, and set up this dilemma for the department, how to treat a soldier for a diagnosed disorder without violating long-standing military policy. The military has also repeatedly argued that it does not have the medical expertise to provide treatment for gender dysphoria. So if this moves forward, then uh, Bradley, a.k.a. Chelsea, uh, will be able to get the treatment that she is looking for um, and maybe get out of a military prison, although maybe that's not as good as it necessarily sounds. Whom's well, uh, obviously... Uh Private Manning is uh, attempting to do it, so for whatever reason, um, that's what uh, she wants, right? Apparently, the defense officials say the Army is expected to meet with the Justice Department to discuss the matter, and the Justice Department declined to comment. According to the executive director of the National Center for Transgender Equality, they said the Constitution requires that prisoners be given medical treatment, saying that it prohibits cruel and unusual punishment against any prisoners, and it doesn't matter if she's requesting treatment for gender dysphoria or a broken leg. They have to treat her, and it is cruel to withhold medical treatment. Pentagon Press Secretary made no, said no decision to transfer Manning to a civilian detention facility had been made. Any such decision will properly balance the soldier's medical needs with our obligation to ensure that Private Manning remains behind bars. He said... The military's refusal to provide necessary medical treatment is flat-out transphobia, said Coombs. Well, rather than deal with the reality that transgender persons are currently serving in the military, they would seek to pawn off any responsibility for these. Uh, the Army sends an average of 15 to 20 prisoners a year to civilians' prisons, but Manning's appeals have not been exhausted. She's still in the military, and her case is of national security interest. These are factors that normally would prevent a transfer. So let me get this straight. They want uh, her to stay in a military prison and receive the uh, treatment for what is it, gender dysphoria? Uh -huh. um, there is that what the, uh, the 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 goal is of this? Well, apparently, if they do that, they'll violate their own policies. So apparently, if she stays in the military prison, she can't receive the treatment. Okay. So the idea I'm asking is what to... the lawyer, what uh, Chelsea Manning's lawyers want. They want her uh, transferred. From what I understand. Transferred. Okay. But I so, could be misunderstanding. I, th I find this one very difficult. Um, I, yes, okay. So you, one would assume you come into prison with a broken leg, or you came into a situation uh, without a broken leg. So if you break your leg at the prison, yes, the prison should be responsible for fixing your leg. Um, prisons also provide uh, treatment for ongoing things, like for instance, if you get a cavity. Uh, whether you had a cavity before you arrived or mm -hmm. after you arrived, whatever, you know, they'll fill or they'll pull a tooth or fill the cavity or whatever. But mostly what they provide as far as medical treatment is as little medical treatment as they possibly can get away with. Mm. Um, I mean, that's been my experience when I was in prison. And, uh, you know, they, <laughs> you didn't see a lot of people getting a lot of complicated surgeries or anything like that. I knew right. a guy who had uh, major back problems, wanted uh, surgery for years, and, uh, you know, just you know, just got nothing. All he got was ibuprofen prescribed to him for like a decade. And his he claimed his liver was going to be shot as a result, but he just didn't have any choice. So I I find this 
a difficult situation. Um, I don't think that, like I've, I, for, sort of viscerally, I say no, no. You don't go to prison and get yourself a a, a gender change operation um, on the taxpayer dime. Sorry, just that's. That is, um, in, to my mind, sort of a uh, an elective surgery, as mm. it were. And, you know, no, I don't get a, a nose job, but I really want a nose job. I'm a guy with a normal nose trapped in a body with a large nose. You know, I, I it, it doesn't appeal to me. Um, now, I don't think Chelsea Manning should be in prison. I am right. going to represent, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to respect that Chelsea Manning wants to be called a woman, even though... You know, I, I, I don't have a lot of experience with this whole gender dysphoria thing. I'm going to go, yep, okay. She says she's a she, fine. I can live with that. But, you know, the, the U.S. taxpayer is now responsible for paying for what I consider to be elective surgery. I can't go that far. By the way, um, I, maybe I did misunderstand. Her lawyer did say that uh, civilian prisons are not as safe as the military prisons and they would not find a civilian prison to be acceptable but a military facility would be so they want her to be able to receive the treatment and they want her to be able to receive it in a military prison but apparently that may not be possible so this gets a little more interesting um, if it's a military prison because you know you kind of have to ask yourself well the military took on this individual shouldn't they have done some testing to know whether or not they were going to have to deal with somebody who wanted to have uh you know some kind of operation in the future i don't know i don't I mean, know if, i mean what is the likelihood that anybody's going to have an are you a transgender test when you go to jail uh, i think that's something that could very easily be suppressed as well uh with a repressed within an individual especially when they're looking to enter the military sure. and maybe this is a conclusion that chelsea manning came to after spending a very significant period of time in uh, unhealthy isolation. I'm oh, not yeah. saying it was the result. 24-hour lighting and everything. I mean, I remember reading yeah. about that years ago. Now, I'm not saying it was the result of an unhealthy situation that she came to this conclusion, but with that much time to think and maybe discover things about yourself, that's mm. part of it. I don't like the fact that it's being called a mental illness, right, which makes the situation even more complicated. That it needs to be treated or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. We'll come back with uh, more. You're welcome to share your thoughts, 855-450-FREE. We'll also pick up on the list of 10 things to stop doing to yourself, and we'll talk about a victory lap. What is that? Free Talk Lab. May I have your attention, please? If you are trying to lose weight, we need your help. We're AF Plus, and we have too much product and too few participants in our nationwide risk-free trial. If you need to lose 30 pounds or more and would like to participate, call now, 1-800-967-9495. AF Plus is an amazing, proven breakthrough in weight loss, a once-daily capsule that can help you lose weight in days. It's also one of the healthiest ways to lose weight because each capsule contains natural ingredients, including green tea extract. You'll boost your metabolic heart rate, allowing you to shed pounds in days with just one capsule a day. Be among the first to call for your risk-free trial. Again, we have too many risk-free trials and too few participants. If you would like to lose 30 pounds or more by taking just one all-natural capsule a day, call now to participate in this nationwide risk-free trial, 1-800-967-9495. That number again is 1-800-967-9495. Imagine an acne treatment breakthrough that even Proactive says is better than Proactive. Announcing all new Proactive Plus, the revolutionary new way to clear your skin from the number one name in acne care. Proactive Plus is our best, most effective solution ever. And when you call 1-800-721-4255 today, you can have it tomorrow. Proactive Plus is the modern acne miracle that treats your skin beautifully. The plus means more. More precise, targeted medicine for faster, gentler acne prevention. And more skin-loving solutions so your complexion can look bright and beautiful. I am just so happy with Proactive Plus. I don't think my skin has ever looked this good. Call 1-800-721-4255. Be one of the first to try Proactive Plus. Guaranteed 100% risk-free. You won't see this limited-time offer on TV. It's a radio exclusive. 1-800-721-4255. 1-800-721-4255. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace 
freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at FPP.cc, as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at FPPradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can take control of the airwaves here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com. If you like the show and you like what we're doing here on Free Talk Live, then please shop with us. You can get your shopping taken care of. Get well, a whole lot of stuff from Amazon. You go to shop.freetalklive.com. There are Amazon links for Amazon UK, Amazon Canada, and Amazon US. You just click into the right Amazon for you, order whatever it is you're looking to buy, and Free Talk Live gets a cut of the sale. Very simple process, and it works. It makes a big difference for us when you do that. So thank you for shopping with us through shop.freetalklive.com. Brett is with us from the School Sucks Project, and you were telling us before the show, Brett, that you wanted to talk about something that you called... For lack of a better term, the Libertarian Victory Lap? Yeah, yeah. This this might upset some people, okay. I think. But uh, I, I think this is important. I've been, I've been watching this go on for some time, mostly on Facebook. And I, I think it's just something that people should be conscious of. And or I'd like to see people be conscious of it. I mean, people can do whatever they want, of course. But a tragedy happens, right? Something terrible. People die. Sandy Hook was a good example. Sandy Hook was where I really first noticed this. And then I noticed in my newsfeed on Facebook that people were posting things like, ah, see what happens in a gun-free zone? Mm. You know, and that doesn't show a lot of empathy at all. And it's really not a winning strategy as far as like PR is concerned to express excitement and satisfaction when other people died. Not directly because other people died, but it still is being, you know, kicked off by that. So it's what, like the, the the people's deaths are a tool for your political ends kind of exactly, thing. Exactly. Exactly. So I was listening to your show from last night and you had a caller named Tom who is at this point basically notorious for calling in and uh, you know, being excited one way or the other about the death of police officers. Yeah. So you could see him exercising just a little bit of restraint, not enough for me not to notice, when he was describing the story of how cops were shot during a drug raid. Now, obviously, uh, these are people, objectively speaking, these are people who are going armed into some place that is not their property, where other people are armed, and they're getting shot. And, you know, that's in in many ways justifiable. But there's still this question of, you know, should it be something that could be interpreted by others, outsiders, as being celebrated by voluntarists or libertarians or, or anarchists? Mm -hmm. And it's troubling when I see this. So this came back 
uh, into my head um, first because of um, you know Tom's call yesterday, but also because of the situation that happened in New Hampshire just a few days ago. Some cop was uh, killed, right? A cop was killed, and um, quite a quite a story. It actually happened in Brentwood, which is the town that I lived in. Still at this point. Most of my life, mm. until I was 18 years old, uh, I lived in Brentwood, New. I grew up in Brentwood, New Hampshire, and I know a lot of people there. So, Brentwood, always up to no good. <laughs> Nicely done. Thank you. This is actually the first uh, bad thing that's ever happened there huh. that I that I know of. Okay, as, you know, aside from car accidents. Uh, so. The town of Brentwood is maybe 3,500 people, and I'm friends with, uh, you know, quite a few people on Facebook just because, you know, we grew up in Brentwood, yeah. you know, or their parent, they're friends of my mom or something, and they say, hey, I know you, and you're on Facebook, how, you know, baby boomers are on sure, Facebook. Sure, people search Brentwood, <laughs> yeah. and you come up. <laughs> so I've seen this interesting juxtaposition on my wall in the last couple of days where all of these people that I know from Brentwood are changing their profile pictures to the Brentwood police badge. Oh, boy. Now, I'm not in that camp by any stretch of the imagination. But then I also see things like, cop broke into someone's house and got shot. Good. Mm -hmm. And we mentioned we were talking about a blogger who, in his own words, was celebrating the death of this cop. I'm looking at a post like it right now. Um, you know, A celebratory post? Yeah, I'm I'm glad he's dead. Another politician's lapdog put down like the mad attack dog they are. Nothing less than what people who work enforcing the edicts of politicians deserve. Okay. Now, I knew who this person was. The cop? Yeah. I know a lot of people who knew him. I know that he had a family. Uh, I agree with everything that I've heard people say from a uh, from pure principle standpoint. He was an intruder in somebody else's home. He was, you know, brandishing a firearm. Uh, certainly, in a just world, if a uh, somebody who is part of a criminal gang did that, uh, that is uh, the the consequence. But I'm still wondering if that's something that it's okay to say, if it's smart to say, if that's really going to be a winning strategy, or if the people who say these things are just functioning in this insular world. Where if they have a blog, they know who reads their blog. Mm -hmm. Their blog doesn't exist for the purpose of outreach. And if they're posting this stuff on Facebook, they know who their Facebook friends are. And they don't care who sees it because most of the people who see it are probably going to agree with it. But I just thought it was interesting because I've had maybe just a tiptoe in the Brentwood people memorializing the cop camp. Yep. You know, it's because they're people I know and I knew who this guy was and I lived in that town and there is some connection or uh, certainly some some empathy for those people. But obviously, most of my weight is in this other camp on the other foot. And uh, I just think it's an interesting situation. I think that it's uh, this happens a great deal um, is, is that people are able to point to somebody who's on the extreme other side of the position, whatever it is, and say, see, look. This is what they think of us. And I, either side, you, you pick the extreme side of this position, the putting up the, uh, the you know, the, the worshiping of the, um, you know, the state in this situation. Oh, it's terrible that a person who went inside somebody else's house with a gun has been shot and killed. Let's all memorialize him in a way that we would not memorialize Anyone anybody else, else right. killed in New Hampshire. Right. Okay. People have been killed. in. New There's 1.4 million people in New Hampshire. People get killed every week in New Hampshire in the, in, you know, doing their jobs. This guy's job wasn't going to be making anybody safer by going into this house in all likelihood. I don't know the specifics of the cir circumstance, but it, it, it's unlikely. However, on the other side of the, the situation, when you've got a picture, and I'm looking right here of it, uh, of a cop that's uh, bloodied and, and bashed, um, and it says, good cop? Well, he is now. Um, you know, I mean, you're, you're making their case on both sides. Both sides of this, you're making their case. Um, and you're, you're, you're being the uh, straw man that they're looking for. And it just polarizes people and puts them in other camps. Yeah. It's going to make it that much more difficult for me to talk to somebody about, hey, well, look, I mean, I, I feel terrible for this man and his family. I really do. I mean, obviously, he was just doing his job, but... I mean, we've got to consider the job for a second. There's a hundred, there's forty thousand drug raids in, uh, in America every year. Most of them are done 
over the drug war, excuse me, home home and um, home raids every year, and most of them are done over the drug war. Why not stop the drug war, and then you won't have as many dead cops? As a matter of fact, you won't need as many cops, and people can do other jobs. You can allocate funds more efficiently in our society, and we can grow more quickly to whatever that is that we're going to achieve in the future. Do you think a longer explanation like that? I mean, because that, that's a longer right, version no of a gloat, get, right? Uh, it's tough to make that a meme. It, it, it is. It's it, not a meme. Right, right. Do, do, do you think that that longer version that you just explicated there, is that something that is going to be persuasive to a person who has put up the cop thin blue line or the badge as their profile picture? I mean, it's certainly talking in, in, in calmer terms and not using ridiculous uh, hyperbole or whatever certainly is Well, now you're going to find my bias, preferable. Ian. My bias is, is I've got a news story that I just found today that says that 4% of people believe that they're in the bottom 50% of intelligence. Okay, it's meaning everybody thinks they're pretty bright. Uh, yes, 55% yeah. of people believe that they're, you know, relatively smart. Mm -hmm. I, 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 me too. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the difficulty I have is is that I, if I try to use reason and persuasion with somebody who mm, isn't facile with that kind of uh, thinking, uh, you know, way of thinking, you know, critical thinking and reason, I'm not going to have much luck. And I, w when I see this kind of stuff, I, I do always— I've done it. I, I, can, I can say for yeah. sure there have been posts I've made— out of uh, just frustration or sure. whatever, where I've just said, you know, this is what I think. And then somebody will be upset with me about it. And I'll say, well, what are you doing reading my Facebook profile? If you don't like what I say, why are you reading this? And so are you arguing, Brett, that people who have strong feelings should withhold them, should think twice before they post? No, no, of course. I, I, I don't want to say people should anything, you know, but I, I just think that it's important that we have, when somebody, when some other blogger, writes a post about celebrating the death of a cop, I think that a good counter is exactly what we're doing right now. Turning a, you know, a meme or a short blog article into a conversation that goes into more detail. I think it's important that we do this. I agree with that. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We can talk more about it coming up here and ways to make your life better on the way. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Are you looking for camping, hunting, survival, or shooting gear? ManVentureOutpost.com carries the name brands you want at the lowest prices. Ammunition, knives, firearm accessories, archery, air guns, scopes, binoculars, laser sights, tactical flashlights, fish finders, and boating equipment. ManVentureOutpost.com is family owned and has the lowest prices. Go check it for yourself. Get it quick. Get it from ManVentureOutpost.com. Now buy firearms at ManVentureOutpost.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. 
From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, May 14th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.90 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,306 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $444. Antiwar.com reports the Pentagon did not want it, and their proposed budget rather sought funds for military engineers to fix up the current site, but Gitmo's secretive Camp 7, which houses only 15 captive inmates, is going to be replaced with a brand new building at a cost of $69 million. That's $20 million more than the cost was estimated at just last year, but the Pentagon says that has changed because they weren't planning on creating new meeting rooms and a new medical clinic in the high-value detainee building. Even though the Pentagon did not ask for the money, the House Armed Services Committee decided to throw $69 million into the budget for it, insisting that they did not see the proposal for repairs as a long-term solution. Details about the creation of the original Camp 7 remain intensely secret, but the building's floors are reportedly cracking, and with officials looking to keep the facility open, essentially forever, many see a brand new building as the only viable way to ensure it lasts that long. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. The Associated Press reports gay and lesbian couples in Idaho could start getting married as soon as Friday after a judge ruled the state's ban on same-sex marriage was unconstitutional. U.S. District Magistrate Judge Candy Dell wrote in her decision Tuesday evening, Idaho's laws barring same-sex marriage unconstitutionally denies gay and lesbian citizens their fundamental right to marry. Ten other federal district courts have issued similar rulings supporting gay marriage rights. Dell said the state must issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples starting 9 a.m. Friday. The plaintiffs are entitled to extraordinary remedies because of their extraordinary injuries, Dell wrote, saying same-sex couples in Idaho have been denied their economic, emotional, and spiritual benefits of marriage. She also wrote, plaintiffs suffer these injuries not because they are unqualified to marry, start a family, or grow old together, but because of who they are and whom they love. Governor C.L. Butch Otter already has said he intends to appeal the case, meaning an appellate court could still put the weddings on hold. The three-day delay in allowing weddings is apparently in response to a request from the governor. Otter cited the state's constitutional amendment banning same-sex marriage. He said, in 2006, the people of Idaho exercised their fundamental right, reaffirming that marriage is the union of a man and a woman. Today's decision, while disappointing, is a small setback in a long-term battle that will end at the U.S. Supreme Court. Idaho Attorney General Lawrence Wasden said he would consult with the governor on the state's appeal. You've heard of ShinyBadges.com, but you need to check out the New Causes tab. Every item in that section includes a donation to a worthy Liberty Project, like the Free Ross Albrecht Legal Defense Fund. So go to ShinyBadges.com, click on the New Causes tab, and get yourself a quality product that not only supports the cause you believe in, but starts a conversation with your neighbors. Plus, get a free gift when you pay with Bitcoin at ShinyBadges.com. UPI reports lawyers for a Texas inmate made last-ditch appeals Tuesday in an effort to stop the first execution since the botched death of Clayton Lockett in Oklahoma. Robert James Campbell was scheduled to die by lethal injection Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. for kidnapping, robbing, raping, and killing Alexandra Rendon in 1991. Campbell's legal team argues that Texas should delay the execution while investigators determine what went wrong in Oklahoma when Clayton Lockett was put to death April 29th. The lawyers also say that Campbell has an IQ so low that he should be spared the death penalty under a Supreme Court ruling barring the execution of those of subpar standard intelligence. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com.
This is the Onion Week in Review. A study finds that Americans need six hours of uninterrupted sleep at work in order to leave the office feeling refreshed and alert. Leading endocrinologists told reporters that more and more people are pulling all-dayers and drinking coffee just to keep themselves awake for meetings and conference calls. And that in order to be properly rested, employees should arrive at work, check their email for a few hours, and be sound asleep by 11.30 a.m. at the very latest. In order for the body to properly function, adults need to make sure that they're well-rested and they're not staying up too late at work. The Lord our God, divine creator and ruler of the universe, announced Wednesday that he does not consider human beings his most impressive creation, saying instead that mountains are categorically superior in every way. Claiming that mankind was a good creation and worthy of praise, the deity explained that human beings simply pale in comparison to the slopes, valleys, and sheer magnitude of a snow-capped 20,000-foot mountain, and that while all humans eventually grow old and die, mountains last forever. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We're launching into the second hour of the program, and you can take control of the airwaves. We may actually resume at some point the list of 30 things to stop doing to yourself, but we're going to go to the phones first and also maybe flesh out the discussion a little bit more on the victory lap, the the gloating uh, that some will do in the uh, the aftermath of a tragedy, mm-hmm. an unexpected happening. Uh, like recently here in New Hampshire, there was a cop who was apparently shot and another man who was killed in some way. I Honestly, I haven't done any research into the story. I've just seen the headlines. So I don't know, number one, why the cop was there in the man's house in the first place. Apparently, the cop ended up getting killed. The man apparently perished in some sort of an explosion or perhaps for some other reason. But there was also a subsequent explosion blew, uh, blowing a hole in the, the, like the, the house's roof and other places. Yeah. So I don't know what – had you read any further into that, the, Brett? Even the Boston Globe this morning said the details of the – whole event were still pretty sketchy mm. um the the gentleman who shot the like the man who shot the cop uh had no prior criminal record there's some reports of people in the neighborhood now it was an over 55 community too so yeah, that's interesting when people hear noise they in they live in a quiet town like brentwood new hampshire and they're 68 years old and they hear people yelling who are you gonna call you know and that's right. sad that that's the way it is. So there was right? an argument. There was some sort of a fight in the house. The yeah. the police officer was sent there to investigate a domestic disturbance. Okay, uh, I guess for, he found one. For some reason, he went into the house um, with you know his gun drawn mm. apparently, and he was shot. Uh, so yes, and, it, and there's reasons why a police officer would respond to a domestic dispute and then enter a uh, home with his gun drawn right yeah like there's suppose th- there's viable reasons that that might occur and i mean you know brentwood is a town that has a small police force and i do know i know somebody on the force mm-hmm. you know that i'm friendly with even so i uh you know i see how this affects people and I was a little disturbed by, like I said, the victory lap, the I told you so, the celebration uh, of of this event. And this is not a town filled with thug cops, just from my experience. Now, sure. certainly there, there are towns that are in New Hampshire, as we know, as many of us have had experience with, right? Mm-hmm. Certain towns come to mind. Uh, but this was not one of them from my experience. You know, you get pulled over and never, ever got a ticket. In, in New Hampshire, even as a teen driving. Um, so, you know, I mean, my experience is different than one that would lead me to celebrate the death of one of Brentwood's cops. So are you saying, you're not saying don't post how you feel, but on the other hand, if you are going to post how you feel, maybe you should be more cognizant no, of how it'll be received? You know, I'm really happy for the, the Larkin Roses of this world. You know, the people who will say things that I won't. I have a Facebook page for The School Sucks Show. I've been trying to post on it more regularly. And what's available, if you want to post 10 times a day, is mostly memes. And memes Mm. can be pretty snarky. And I find myself, like, posting things saying, oh, I would never post this on my personal page. So, yeah, I'm (laughs) glad. Oh, I don't. uh, Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm glad I have this other page where I can put this stuff that is a little bit more cutting, but it's funny. So I'm glad that people uh, like 
Larkin exist who will say things that I won't. And I think that our only counter is not to shame them or say that, oh, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't talk that way, is to try and balance it the best we can. To use it as an excuse to talk about the issue? Yeah, yeah, well, to balance it with deeper conversations. And I'm not saying, I mean, Larkin is a genius, so I'm not trying to single him out. He's a brilliant guy and certainly capable. Well, there's a one can be a genius in getting likes and um, responses on your Facebook page and not necessarily a genius in convincing people, too. It's true. Yeah. Let's go to the phones here and talk to Paul. He's in Nashville. And, Paul, you're on Free Talk Live, the Brett and Mark. Hi. It's, uh, it's actually Nashua, New Hampshire, oh. uh, listening on 1590. Excellent. Uh, anyway, a uh, good discussion. I, uh, I, I guess I was uh, calling because I think most of what I was going to say has been covered just now. But uh, there was some discussion Sorry of the drug war and everything in and my, my understanding is this is you know not related to the drug war. This is a call for a domestic dispute. Hmm. I guess we can't really know exactly what happened between when the cop rolled up and when he entered the house. But there are completely, to my mind, legitimate reasons that you know if, if he rolls up and you know he sees somebody threatening somebody else with a gun or something in the house, you know there could be legitimate reasons there for responding. And uh, I, I certainly wouldn't you know. Uh, uh, you know, obviously, even if even if the cop was in the wrong, it's nothing. It's never right to celebrate a tragedy. But uh, in this particular case, it seems like the cop may have been acting uh, justly. It's 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 quite possible that he did, you know, enter in order to save somebody's life that that was being threatened. And that's that's what, uh, as far as everything that I've read, that could have been what happened. Sure. Yeah. I would even just take. You said celebrating a tragedy. I. I think that a lot of people would say, just based on what I saw, they would say, oh, the, I don't celebrate tragedy. This is a victory over the state, you know? But some people will, uh, um, you know, some people will post, like, the stupid criminal of the day story or photo, right? Yeah. Sure they will, um, yeah. And they'll say, look at this dumb butt. He uh, did this thing and ended up, uh, you know, <laughs> slit in half by the the store's uh, escalator. I don't know. I'm just uh, yuck, coming yuck, up with something. Yuck. What's that? Yuck, yuck, yuck. Right, and then you know, celebrating a tragedy yeah. in that circumstance. But that's okay because it's a criminal, it, not it, someone wearing a badge. Right. Well, and, and the assumption is is that they're always you know there there was criminal intent there. Um, I think in you know if it's if it's a domestic dispute, we don't know what. Why this police officer went? He could very well have seen something through a window, heard, uh, you know, you hear a blood curdling scream, mm -hmm. you just pull up outside. You are the law enforcement officer. And now no one's going to know because he's dead, right? So we don't. Yeah. Get How to do you handle that? The story was one. Uh, one thing that makes a lot of this possible too is distance. If you're in the mall and you see a man do something stupid and get sliced in half by the escalator. You don't go. I'm I'm guessing that almost everybody would not go up and say, ha ha. Yeah, ah. it's horrifying. But you start putting this distant, oh, maybe he's 30 states away. It's over the internet. It's already been made into a meme. Yeah. Suddenly it's not as real anymore. And I, I, I can remember there was this debate a couple of years ago in the Free State Project. Uh, a police officer in Stratum, I believe, was killed. And there was some talk of going and protesting or, or maybe not protesting, but demonstrating at his funeral. Oh, what a good idea. Worst idea ever. As far as, <laughs> as, as far that that actually made me at the time want to distance myself from all well, things. You know how good the PR for the Westboro Baptist Church. They have exactly. PR, so, you know, you can imitate them. Yeah, but Let's a lot of people. That. Yeah, but a lot of people were were saying that wow, this would be a really good outreach opportunity for the drug war. It's a good outreach opportunity for nothing. It's it's <laughs> it's uh, it's just you know a PR suicide as far as I'm concerned. But that is different because that actually would have been face to face, and it would have been interesting to see how some people would have behaved, even if they have these strong anti-cop views. It would have been interesting to see what the impact would be if they came face to face with the grieving family of a cop at uh, that cop's funeral. Which well, we know the Westboro Baptist Church people did it because they wanted people to fight them. They wanted angry, family, grieving family members to come at them so they'd have the ability to sue and gain some sort of financial advantage. So that's just really like a, a racket more than anything, I think. Seemed like it. Paul, any other thoughts you want to share? Well, yeah, I just think that it's important to not view, you know, collectivism is, is, is wrong regardless. Amen. And I think Viewing somebody as a cop just because they're a cop, they're the bad guy. Let's look at the individual circumstances here. It's very different, you know. If if if, 
if he busted in in, in a in a you know drug raid to this peacefully sitting family peacefully sitting there, you know it would still be a tragic situation, but it would be different. Uh, then this circumstance, he may have been responding to somebody seriously in danger, and uh, we shouldn't just judge somebody because they're a cop. Uh, I agree that uh, you shouldn't do that, and thank you, Paul. I appreciate hearing from you. In fact, I wanted to point uh, to further that point a little bit. When I moved to New Hampshire, I was angry at the police uh, because I'd seen so many stories and heard so many stories and known people who'd had their lives torn, That's a story. New torn apart by yeah, uh, but personal stories as well, personal friends of mine who had been arrested and you know, their lives made worse by the police, and uh, it was easy to saddle all police with that same responsibility uh, mm. for, you know, well, uh, every cop must be the same. They're all the part of the thin blue line. Well, it's said uh, in the liberty movement that all cops are bad. The very act of being a cop is bad in, at times, and people say this in the liberty movement. Yeah, and that's what I wanted to address here. We can continue in a moment at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And how that, my perspective changed on that uh, after moving up here. More on the way. You can take control on Free Talk Live. Angioprim can unclog blocked arteries and improve blood flow in all parts of your body. Angioprim is oral chelation. Easy, simple, liquid oral chelation. You take it with juice before breakfast and forget about it. Angioprim works fast, unlike old-fashioned chelation that takes hours. Just log on to angioprim.com. That's angioprim, A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M, angioprim.com. Angioprim users say they have more energy, more strength, more endurance. Increased circulation and blood flow will make all your body parts work better. Log on to angioprim.com. Angioprim.com to get more information on how you can get started and start feeling better, having fun, and doing more again. Lots more. Talk to a trained Angioprim consultant. Call Angioprim toll free at 877 882 7221. That's 877 882 7221. Or log on for complete information. Angioprim.com. That's Angioprim.com. Find out how Angioprim can work for you. Get the facts about Angioprim at Angioprim.com gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-2237 for the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As Good As Gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp dot freetalklive.com Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com MindThings.com is a fun online game that pits you against people around the world to mine for scarce resources. Do business in a capitalist economy with virtually mined gold, tax-free, 
It doesn't require a big time commitment. Your little mining robot guy works whether you're logged in or not. It costs nothing to play, but you can buy bonuses. They even accept bitcoins. Go to minethings.com, use coupon code FTL, and double your mining speed. It's free. Minethings.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and of course, you can bring up whatever's on your mind. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We still have the 30 things, of which we have done nine of those things. 30 things to stop doing to yourself. We can continue that list, which we've been doing now for off and on over the last month and a half. Four months or so, yeah. Uh, So we'll continue that here in a little bit. Also, you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. And I was talking about the police and how uh, when I moved to New Hampshire, I was pretty mad about the police. And to me, police were just this nondescript, nebulous mass of people who all operated by the same principle of, you know, make life hell for peaceful people and every now and then bust a real criminal. And uh, while I still think that uh, police do things that are wrong on a regular basis, one of the shifts that happened with me here in New Hampshire is getting to know the police as human beings. And that's something that I don't think you can avoid as an activist in New Hampshire, because as an activist, you're going to encounter the police Likely, if you're out doing activist things, if you're just voting or something, you're probably not going to. But if you are out doing activist-y kind of things, you're going to encounter the police. You're going to get to know these guys, uh, whether you like it or not. And uh, that will result in them being more real, I think, to you. Yeah. And you realizing that, you know, these guys aren't monsters. Most of them aren't monsters. And they're just people like you and I who, in this case, they believe they're doing uh, right— you know, following their orders, doing their jobs, that they've been told this story about how they need to do these things for the functioning of society, et cetera, et cetera. But they're, we believe that they're doing wrong by hurting peaceful people, arresting people for victimless crimes. And looking at them as monsters, treating them as monsters is never going to convince them that they're doing the no, wrong thing. You can never shame somebody into seeing eye to eye with you. And someday I hope there is like a definitive study on the ratio of bad apples to the rest of the bunch. Hmm. So we can finally know, is it 5%? Is it 95%? It's probably somewhere in the middle. Yeah, it is a profession that does attract monsters. But I would, you know, guess that less than half of the people who are police are in it for the worst of intentions. Well, um, I can tell you that prison guards are more roundly vilified than police officers Mm -hmm. um, in society. And my experience with them was that, um, you know, the 25% of them I would have considered to be pretty sick sociopaths. 25% of them I would have considered to be really good people. And about 50% of them I would have considered folks making a living. Yeah. So that was my experience. So I think what happens when you have a tragedy like the Brent Brentwood yeah, is it? Yeah. in New Hampshire, a small town, you said you lived a long time there and you don't remember anything happening like this where a police officer was shot. There was an explosion in a home. The homeowner's dead. So like it's been a, a lot of news up here in New Hampshire about this happening. And so you were talking about how distance people far away from this can be more insensitive to it. And I think also the people who are maybe new to New Hampshire who are still stuck in that old mentality about the police being bad are also likely to be more insensitive to this and say what they think. And then the people who have, have known this officer or they lived in the town, they knew know people who know him. If they don't know him directly, they probably know somebody who knows him directly because yeah, yeah. that's how small things can be here in New Hampshire. I mean, even in a larger place, like here in Keene, you said there's, what, 3,500 people in, in Brentwood? I, I would say New Hampshire's probably about, or uh, Brentwood, New Hampshire's about 3,500. Even here in Keene, there's 24,000 people and everybody seems to know everybody else. Sure. So uh, so th- these folks are seeing a friend and or a friend of a friend who's been killed. And of course, he's a police officer, so they give him the benefit of the doubt. And either way, it's a tough situation for them, and I can I can totally understand why it would come off as really off-putting if somebody else was just harping about how you know good good riddance cop you scumbag yeah, that that yeah. would really upset those people. 
but there's also a certain level of people who, even if you candy coat your opinion with them about the police, that it won't matter. Like there's there's no way to express uh, disdain for some of the things the police do without being labeled a cop hater, without being told that you it's know. True. Well, I mean, there's there's some people that are going to, uh, you know, the, no matter what the social norm is, they're simply going to adopt the social norm because they don't want to be excluded from the group. Mm-hmm. You know, these people are the most uh, the the most powerful glue for social norms because they won't listen to reason. They're not interested in reason. They're not interested in any of the words coming out of your mouth. Well, yeah, maybe such and such, but and then it's all over. Let's go to Daniel in Indiana. You're on Free Talk Live listening via TuneIn. Hey, Daniel. Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey, what's on your mind tonight? Uh, My question is along the lines of cops. Um, I don't want to classify all cops as bad, but at the same time, I don't want to classify all cops as heroes like happens, you know, in schools and TV shows and things like that. Yeah. Um, I've got a four-year-old daughter, and I was kind of wanting maybe some insight from Mark and Brett, too. What are some like age appropriate things that I could use to to sort of educate my daughter as she goes along the years that um, you know cops are just people doing jobs and not you know hmm that's a good question. I keep better, saying uh, that the know. indoctrination is um, strong in that area. Um, I've got to say, I don't have great answers for you. Um, you know, there's lots of toys out there that are going to be aimed directly at uh, inculcating your child with statism, right? There's mm-hmm. military, you know, there's right. uh, Green Army men. Lego police. Lego police. Jack loves the Lego police stuff. I mean, you know, you don't get the good helicopter unless you get the police <laughs> helicopter. Sure. Um, right. And, uh, you know, these you just got to keep on saying things like you know letting them know that just because somebody's got a, a hat and a badge doesn't make them the good guy and just because somebody's got scruff on their face and a sock hat doesn't make them the bad guy and it's amazing sure. how much of that stuff goes on take a look at the lego city stuff yeah i you know, i think right. too that it's it's a, a lesson that can be built on a foundation of you know universal values and and preferable behavior Right. Uh, It's wrong to initiate force. It's wrong to steal. It's wrong, um, you know, to threaten or aggress against somebody else. So, I mean, if that is is universalizable, if I can make up a word for the sake of this conversation, (laughs) then clearly, eventually they would understand that this person who's, you know, wearing this costume is potentially a threat if they are not adhering to those universal principles uh, that, you know, gotcha. self-ownership, non-aggression, and property rights. Because they don't. You would you would be a cop for a day if you followed those principles, right? Mm-hmm. And somebody would send you home because right. the job just doesn't work that way. So I think if that's in place first, uh, then, you know, as a foundation, then on top of that, you can start going into more of the nuances of what the police are. And, you know, there's a history lesson there as well you know the police are a relatively new phenomenon in america i don't think they go back you know as far as towns having police departments i don't think that's much more than 100 years old 1850 was uh, about when london okay. got it, the first police department but consider that they had sheriff's departments before that sure daniel, sure. Uh, daniel anything else right. you want to share tonight no, that's it for tonight. Thanks, Thanks for the call i appreciate hearing from you your thoughts on the police and how to how to approach a situation where a cop is killed and another person in this case is killed, an individual, uh, a controversial, sad, tragic situation. How best to approach that as somebody who loves the ideas of liberty without pandering at the same time to the cop lovers yeah. out there? Uh, this is not easy. 855-450 free. You can share your thoughts here on Free Talk Live. You've been lied to. Lied to by corrupt Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, and I want to give you a free copy of my Inc. Magazine best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire, because Wall Street's 401k and other investment plans have failed millions of Americans. After losing 35% in my IRA in the crash several years ago, I said enough. 
Since then, I've discovered an IRS-approved way to safely grow my money up to 12 to even 17%, cut taxes dramatically, but also have my money protected when the next crash comes. Call now to talk with a specialist to discover this little-known strategy to potentially build a million-dollar tax-free retirement income, get potential 12 to 17% returns, and never lose when the next crash hits. Call 888-885-8820 and discover this tool that people like Walt Disney and J.C. Penney used to safely grow rich. Plus, get one of just 97 free books left. We even cover shipping and handling. Call 888-885-8820. 888-885-8820. Again, that's 888-885-8820. Copblock.org slash pivothead. To ensure that a record of the truth of police interactions exists and is accessible, we each need to fill. That's why we're happy to announce the Accountability Through Transparency video contest the winner of which will receive a pair of pivot head sunglasses. For more information and to submit your video entry, go to cutblock.org slash pivot head. One, document with a camera, a police employee exhibiting double standards or the standards we expect them to live up to. This can be done while on foot, during a vehicle stop, while submitting an open records request, etc. Two, upload your video to your YouTube channel. Three, fill out the form at cutblock.org slash pivot head by the deadline of midnight Eastern Standard Time, May 23rd, 2014. Four, the winner chosen by contest sponsors will be notified by email and the Pivot Head sunglasses will be shipped once a mailing address is received. Coplock.org slash Pivot Head. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $40 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $40 price only lasts through Porkfest, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. And this is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want. Just dial on in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We're talking about uh, how to address the police and tragic situations where our neighbors are maybe putting, as you indicated, Brett, with the situation in Brentwood, uh, in New Hampshire, a small town police officer killed recently in some sort of a shooting. The homeowner also killed in that circumstance. There was an explosion. It's been all over the news, at least up here. Uh, People have been putting insignias and or the, the badge of the police on their Facebook profile. Yes. And that may be an indicator that this is not a person with whom you want to start a conversation, at least at that moment. Uh, about police abuse and how bad the cops can be. So the whole victory lap concept is people jumping on the opportunity, not waiting even a day, 
you know, to mm-hmm. let the tragedy of an event like this or Sandy Hook sink in for the other people who might be their friends on Facebook or Twitter or wherever, and they just launch right into what, for uh, many people, probably perceive as an attack. And that is basically, when, when you hit somebody like that in a, in a highly emotional state, as far as your political ideas are concerned, I think, more often than not, you've made an enemy for life. So we can continue the discussion. You're welcome to share your thoughts toll-free at 855-450-FREE. Privacy is important online, and it does take some effort to make sure that you've got it. And one of the things you can do is go and get ProXPN. It's a global virtual private network. They encrypt your data, meaning that before whatever it is you're sending to the Internet gets to your Internet service provider, it's encrypted by ProXPN software meaning that your ISP will no longer be logging what you're doing. Because right now they're probably logging every website you visit and every search term that you enter for up to five years in some cases. So you can stop that tonight by going to proxpn.com slash FTL, downloading the software. It's available for Windows, Mac, iOS devices, and Android devices as well. If you're a Linux user, just email their support to get details on how to get it set up. It works well with Linux. It just takes a, it's a little different. Uh, so go to proxpn.com slash FTL. Use our discount code when you're ready to upgrade to premium to get unlimited bandwidth. You can get different servers around the world to which you can connect. You can privately torrent with the premium account. And you can get that 20% off for the lifetime of your account by using code FTL20 at proxpn.com slash FTL. There's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. You have nothing to lose but your privacy. Another neat thing that ProXPN does, allows you to do, is to get around blocks. So if you're maybe at a workplace where you're not allowed to go to certain websites or at a school or in another country where certain uh, sites or search terms are restricted, ProXPN solves that problem too. Very useful and so affordable at 5 bucks a month when you use our discount code and buy the annual plan with code FTL20 at ProXPN.com slash FTL. If you want to save even more, buy that annual plan with Bitcoin. As uh, we continue here, we've got James. He's in Scottsdale, Arizona. James, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Brett, and Mark. Hello, James. Yes, Yes, may Detective Charles Chuck Dinwiddie rest in peace. Who's that? For all those, the one that um, was celebrating the hour of his death yesterday, he wasn't talking about the guy in Brentwood. And uh, when he said finally finished off, and enclosed in, a, enclosed in a casket. Oh, you're talking about no our caller yesterday, uh, Tom from New Hampshire, who was celebrating the yes. death of a police officer. Gotcha. Yes, and I should like to say that anybody on, F, on Free Talk Live, any of your listeners or even hosts that thought that that joke was funny, I hope that they suffer the same type of hell that that poor officer's family is suffering right now. I truly do think Tom is a, a wicked and disgusting human being. But See, and I, I did hear I thought that Tom was he, I thought that Tom was being uh, you know far better than he has been in the past on calls and that his uh, his uh, you know conversation while lyrical um, didn't didn't cross the line into cop hating I you know he said it cl- he they closed the casket it was murdered in the line no, of duty he did not make That's a joke could you quote the qu- could you quote the joke for me please. Finally, finished off in is in a closed casket, if I remember from memory. I haven't checked the archives. Why don't you check the archives Wait, and find out his wit? I'll, I'll say, James, he did, have, correctly. he did have what seemed like to me, because I listened to it, and it seemed like he had a nice punchy ending prepared that did draw— He seemed to me, Brad, no disrespect, that he seemed to be thinking that the cop had it coming because he's on the wrong side of the drug war, as in that he's the bad guy and the narco-capitalist— uh, and his girlfriend that shot at the cops are the good guys. But I didn't call in to talk about that. I just wanted to cast some scorn and maybe some religious, spiritual uh, upbringing onto your your fellow host and listeners. I listened for an hour and a half after that show, and not one person condemned Tom. But one of the hosts sure did laugh. And Tom is a wicked individual, most definitely. Check the tapes. I think I quoted him pretty damn accurately, but I haven't listened to the tapes. But Brett, I think Tom I definitely like did. Uh, definitely opera. was gloating about the death. I mean, he what? he seemed to be reveling in it, and I was probably the one who laughed too. Just to be fair, I don't really remember. I, I, I think that it, you yeah, know what he had. You're not Catholic, you're not Christian, and you reject the God of the Bible. And, th- and just like I find it ironic that people that make fun of circumcision call Bradley a dude that looks like a lady 
she. James, wait, dude. Ian, I, I'm watching Ian's finger. He's point. so ready to to hang to hang up on you. And you said something about making me an offer. So I just wanted to make sure that we got that in. I'm interested in what the offer is. Well, I already offered, a, if you listen to Free the Talk Live when you're not in the studio, uh, once in a while, $100,000 if you can come up with just one racist comment. My, uh, my talk radio head hero, uh, Dennis Prager, has ever said that's racist or anti-immigrant. Uh, oh, so this was from I a couple of weeks ago when I said that there oh, was there was week. oh was it last week that I said there was some racism mm-hmm. in conservative talk radio or or there's there's yeah. very much a racist code language that is used by conservatives. It's not overt racism, and I'll tell you exactly uh-huh. why that is. Now, first of all, as you far as Dennis, Dennis Prager, Prager is concerned, twice by name, Brad. Uh, what? You mentioned Dennis Prager twice by name. Oh, okay. James, thanks for the challenge. So, well, Pre- appreciate hearing from you tonight. Uh, go uh, ahead with your explanation about radio racism, talk talk hosts, etc. All right. You never get through a sentence with, with James well, still on the line. as far as James what, what is you concerned. Mean? Whoa, 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 whoa. You think you can get through a sentence? Uh uh-huh. You see, this is the point, is that you, as soon as you start saying something, he's going to j- jump in. And, you know, I get it. You know, he was he was holding you to task. He said right. you mentioned Prager. I remember you mentioning Prager. So he is offering $100,000 to anyone who can find something, what was it, uh, racist? Uh, racist that Dennis Prager said. So, I don't know. I don't of, listen to Dennis Prager. Or anti-immigrant. Here, here's this. As of right now, I do not have any examples of Dennis Prager. I think in the spur of the moment, I uh, foolishly tried to lump together a bunch of names of conservative hosts, Mm -hmm. of which Dennis Prager was one. I have no examples of Dennis Prager being racist, so I would like to apologize to James, and I'm sorry for any discomfort or problems that might have caused him in the past week, Mm. knowing that a man on the radio had said something bad about Dennis Prager. Dennis Prager actually has, you know— some things that are okay that he says. I've, I've heard him before. Yeah. Um, but I will stick to this idea that generally conservative talk show hosts have a racist code language that they use. Now, I sound like I'm borrowing terms from the left here, but I'll tell yeah, you. Yeah, you do. I'll, I'll tell you why this is. Um, for a long time, conservatives were not allied with the religious right as they are today. You know, they were not allied with deeply religious evangelical people. That didn't start until the late 70s and early 80s when they took a page from the Democrats playbook. The Democrats, since the days of FDR, had been identifying poor, downtrodden minorities, women as as their cause. Because in their, you know, their high-minded intellectual ivory towers, they said, these people are poor, so they're dumb, and they'll believe whatever we tell them. Mm. So the conservatives, by the late 70s and early 80s, realized that they would use the same trick against the dumbest people they could find. And I'm speaking from their point of view. I'm not saying all evangelicals or, uh, you know, Southern Christians are dumb. But you find deeply religious people in the South— You also find a lot more racism in the South. So they have been building this code language of racism into their platform. In a moment. Do you have examples of this code language? Oh, it's everywhere. Yeah, yeah. That is more on the way here at 855 450 free. It's free talk live. May I have your attention, please? If you are trying to lose weight, we need your help. We're AF Plus, and we have too much product and too few participants in our nationwide risk free trial. If you need to lose 30 pounds or more and would like to participate, call now, 1-800-967-9495. AF Plus is an amazing, proven breakthrough in weight loss, a once-daily capsule that can help you lose weight in days. It's also one of the healthiest ways to lose weight because each capsule contains natural ingredients, including green tea extract. You'll boost your metabolic heart rate, allowing you to shed pounds in days with just one capsule a day. Be among the first to call for your risk-free trial. Again, we have too many risk-free trials and too few participants. If you would like to lose 30 pounds or more by taking just one all-natural capsule a day, call now to participate in this nationwide risk-free trial, 1-800-967-9495. That number again is 1-800-967-9495. Gentlemen, in search of a million-dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My Magic Mud, the fluoride-free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste, and safe to swallow. 
My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com we love that you're passionate about GCN. And whether you're a listener, a business owner, or a radio industry professional, we've redesigned the new GCN newsletter to keep you in the know. Text GCN Live to 22828 or click on the banner at GCNlive.com. Enter by May 15th. You'll qualify to win a six-month supply of storable food from MyPatriotSupply.com. Start receiving your newsletter today. The future of talk radio. GCN. A hot new murder craze sweeps Chicago. Things that shouldn't be said in modern society are said 1,400 times at the RNC, and a brave woman enters a restaurant without first looking it up online. This is the Onion Week in Review. The World Wildlife Fund quickly backtracked Thursday from a recently released press statement saying panda ears are, quote, absolutely delicious. Organization officials noted that while panda ears do taste amazing, braised, steamed, fried, or cooked in an omelet, they should not have announced it publicly, nor should they have ever eaten any part of a cheetah, giraffe, or Bengal tiger, no matter how good they may be. According to company sources, the Netflix board of directors held a tense series of meetings earlier this morning to decide whether the fantasy comedy Michael is streamworthy. The board reportedly sat through its mandatory two back-to-back screenings of the 1996 film starring John Travolta as an angel visiting Earth, all while passionately arguing over the film's story, acting, and level of enjoyment upon subsequent viewings to determine if the movie should be available through its instant viewing program. This is the Onion News Network. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Do you love coffee as much as I love coffee? Here's a delicious way to drink the best of the best coffee and make a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Comano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox Coffee. And you can try a pound for free. All you do is cover shipping. It's organic, shade-grown, top 1% Arabica grade. 10% of future purchases help our efforts to give the gift of human freedom through at least 100 microloans via World Vision. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves and do it toll free here at 855 450 free. 10 things, or not 10 things, 30 things. We're through 10 of them almost. 30 things to stop doing to yourself. We can resume that list here in a little bit. Also, talking about the police and talk radio racist code. Brett will give us some examples of what he means by that here in a moment. And I was talking earlier about the Free State Project being a, a real shift for me as far as how I viewed the police. And I view them now as uh, as human beings instead of this sort of amorphous mass of uh, evil people. I think that they're doing they're human beings who are doing some t- sometimes the wrong thing to other human beings, and and I don't have a problem telling them that. Uh, you talked about uh, Brett shaming earlier mm-hmm. that you know nobody's going to change their mind if they're if they're feeling shamed. Um, but at the same time, I'm not just going to let Jason Short from Keen Police walk out of uh, fat stuff. Uh, and tell him thanks. You know, I'm going exactly. to tell, I'm gonna tell sure. Jason Short, who is a, a local Keene police officer, Fat Stuff is the local head shop that was recently raided by the DEA. I told Jason that— With the help is, of Keene police. With the help of Keene police. They guarded the door, basically. And uh, and I told him, look, this is a sad day for Keene police, and uh, I don't appreciate what you're doing here today. And I had a I had a conversation with him. If you watch the video that I made, it's a 17-minute long video. I took four hours of this DEA raid and you know edited it down to 17 wow. minutes. yeah. And um, at the very end, I put in the conversation I had with Jason Short because the tone that I took with the DEA was much louder and much more get out of our town kind of tone. We sure. don't want you around here. This is not cool. We Stop don't like doing your tap this. around here. Stop stealing from people. Stop ruining people's lives. So that was kind of the tact I took with the DEA. But 
that they're not neighbors. There are people from Boston who, you know, strapped on with guns and came and robbed a store. Jason Short and the other Keene police officers are, they're our neighbors. These are the people who, you know, it's not the same situation with them versus the DEA. So I treat Jason differently than I treat the DEA in the rest of the video. I let Jason know on a, you know, with a kinder tone in my voice that I don't appreciate what it is he's doing. And I don't think that's wrong of me to do because I feel like feedback is important for these guys. And if all anybody ever does is say, Atta boy, you guys are great. Thanks for saving the community. Uh, and just constantly pats them on the back, puts their Facebook pictures as police badges or thin yep. blue lines or things yep. like that, then all they ever get is that positive reinforcement from people. Well, I think that it's okay to give people uh, some feedback, some critical feedback on how they're performing. It absolutely is. And when they get that, or even when they get a little bit of resistance, I think they have to take that memory to their next encounter. If all a police officer ever encounters is obedience, complete mm -hmm. fear in obedience, it can be very emboldening. Sure, they'll know? just keep taking more, yeah, more steps. Yeah, absolutely. So that, that pushback, like... I've never really been in a position where I could just disappear into a jail for 15 days. Mm -hmm. It's just never been uh, my lifestyle. And, you know, even though I've looked at some of the things that people have done, and we've had this conversation before, uh, me, you, Derek, uh, I've had it with Adam Kokesh on my show, uh, I don't get what you're doing, right? But I'm glad there's people who have the courage and the willingness to do these things. You know, better better have some people do it than not do it. And I'm realizing there's much more of a division of labor in trying to forward the ideas of liberty. So I used to often quietly say, that's stupid, you know, and I don't say that anymore. <laughs> I don't I don't say that anymore. I still say it's stupid in my mind. <laughs> However, it's uh, stupid for me. I might say that would be stupid if I was doing what, it. the DEA thing or something just stupid generally, there? you know, like outside the system activism, um, civil disobedience, you know, like disagree with and whatever, whatever it is. Is holding the police accountable considered outside the system? activism? Yeah. Yeah. Why? I mean, like it's just I, well, I is anything not in, is something outside the system so long as it's not um, basically begging a politician. Is that what your de begging definition a politician of or being because, a politician? Because, as you know, holding a video camera and asking the police questions, it seems fully within the system to me. It's not. I I've seen you doing it for a decade now, and it hasn't done a damn thing. Uh, depends on how you look at things, Mark. Well, there are a lot of people who move to New Hampshire yep, as a result of the that. activism that we do. So it there's, has done something. That. Thank you. That's the that's the thing that it has done. And um, you, I mean, you know, he said he didn't. You know, what does he think? And this is what I think. I think that you've got different goals than what I have. I want to, you know, see this, uh, see New Hampshire become more liberty oriented, and yeah, attracting people is part of that, but. I, I don't want to do it with outside the system activism because I got to live here. So you just stand by as the police raid a person's home, destroy a person's They're business. raiding people's homes already all so over the country. So that makes it okay. So now that they've it's done not it elsewhere, okay. it's okay to, for them to do it to your neighbors? I'm not going to stand by and stay quiet like a good little citizen as somebody's business is being destroyed, someone who's peaceful, who interacts with other people on a peaceful basis, who, by the way, the owner of that store sent me a message on Facebook Saying thank thanking you. me up and yep. down uh, for what I did that day. Sure did. Absolutely true. And it wasn't just me. It was other activists who were out there, plus locals who were out there as well, to express how they were concerned for this business owner. And thank goodness people in Keene are willing to stand up for themselves and willing to stand up for others and speak out against this. It's it's people like you, Mark, who stand by the side and you say nothing and you just look on and you think things. And you think this is a terrible thing, but you won't speak out about it. Well, he's, You're the ones who are the problem. But he's Nonsense. putting – that's not – I don't agree with you there. He's putting his neck out more than 99.9% .9 of people just by being here tonight it's not good enough brett it's not good enough unless you <laughs> unless you put you know you stop doing your nationally syndicated radio program which is the largest platform of liberty and go out and fight a traffic ticket with the people of Keene. you haven't done enough like that's what it's all about i didn't say you Ian. haven't done enough no, yeah, yeah, that's what you. Did. It's people like you. It's people who don't do anything who stand no, along the side. Like, no, you said and I am. Uh, you used me as the poster child yeah. for people who don't do enough, so, meaning that I did not just, freaking do enough. Just remember, if you own a business and the police are raiding you, Mark won't do I anything own a business. about it. I own a business. Mark and will just stand by and he'll watch quietly. I think you're being more divisive than than you need to be here. He's like an a hole. I, that's I, why. I, you. By the way, you are the reddest man I've seen right now. <laughs> Very red. Um. But I, I mean, I think, you know, you should see each other as being on the same side 
here, considering that most people, it's not that most people are doing nothing. Most people don't even know there is a problem. It, re it reminds me of like the Occupy movement, and they were saying we are the 99%, when statistically in any way that matters, they were the 1% of, first of all, people who recognize that there is a problem. That's mm -hmm. almost nobody. And then the people who are willing to do anything about sure. it is almost nobody within that group. So you two are allies, and I think this comes back to division of labor. You have no kids. You are unmarried, Ian. You can probably afford to take more significant risks than Mark can. You know, you would agree, right? Sure, sure. No, so, I'm not. I don't want to make it sound like Mark isn't contributing anything. It's just that that attitude of his is what I'm saying is the problem. If more people were to not just stand quietly aside as the police run roughshod over innocent people's lives, then maybe the police would behave in a different manner. I don't think maybe it's if true. they were getting feedback from people more like what I was giving to them rather than people just quietly, meekly I don't think letting people, them get away with it. I don't think everybody's it. got the personality for it, Ian. The fact is, is that you've been doing this a long time. You've been uh, pretty successful at keeping yourself in check you know i i get, I get pretty You're angry saying you get violent you i can't could very control well. yourself i right. could very well no then that's I a good a, reason to do that a to, big to anger management that. issue man yeah. and it's a good point and I, that's I, and I'm not sure that you're doing anything particularly good, uh, honestly. I mean, I haven't seen the results, the fruits of your labor, well, other than some people saying it's great and some people saying it sucks. If the metric is it brings people to Keene, then that's that's a result that requires further investigation as well, right? Because maybe of all the people out there who might feel similarly, maybe you have somebody like Derek J, who's in Pennsylvania and says, I like what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They share my values. I'm a peaceful man. I'm going there to do that. But then you might have other people who say, I like what they're doing. They're annoying people in filming it. I like to annoy people. I'm going <laughs> to go there. Right. So you're, yeah. you're casting a very big net. Right. So so the result itself of just getting people to come to New Hampshire. Yeah, you've had some great people come here. Right. But you've also had some people who weren't so great. Sure. You know, so so that's something that I think. So has Manchester, by the way. Oh, I'd absolutely. Like to point that out. And they have not had the level of publicity around the activism that goes on there. So it's just an, uh, there have been some bad people that have gone to Manchester and yeah, some yeah. of that has become public. Yeah. I, we don't know how much of it hasn't become public. When the bad people come to Keene, they become more visible. And so it's more of a memorable thing when somebody like that. But I remember a couple of years ago, there was a Manchester activist who was outed at Porkfest for stealing from his roommates. And he left the movement. And you you look surprised. You hadn't heard about that. No. Uh, he left the movement uh, with shame. And he took off after he was outed on stage by his roommates for being a thief. And then it was after that that other uh, former roommates of his started to come out and started to say they, they had also had incidents with this person. Of course, his roommates at the time had said, well, gosh, it would have been nice had you told us about this prior to us taking him on uh, as a tenant. By the way, that particular individual ended up moving to Texas where he's now going to prison for uh, raping a teenager, apparently. Oh, my. Uh, drugging and raping. 855 450 free and so you know lots of people are attracted to new hampshire some not so desirable but i wouldn't say that one form of activism or another is the cause of that there's more on the way here you can take control and we still have to get to the talk radio code i haven't forgotten yes, about that. yes we'll get back to that uh, or get to that here coming up in hour three 855 450 free this is free talk live what if humans found a habitable planet, set up housekeeping, and then got left alone by Earth and its big government? Well, that happened in Freehold, Michael Z. Williamson's seminal work. Now available for the first time in a signed, limited hardback edition. Other books in the series are also available in paperback. I cannot recommend a modern fiction work more highly than Freehold. Earth might have left Freehold alone, but it doesn't stay that way. It's war. Get your copy right now at all major booksellers and shop.freetalklive.com. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. 
This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagen with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, May 14th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,307, silver opened at $19.90, and Bitcoin is trading at $443.85. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication for all your print and audio duplication needs. Mention promo code LIBERTY and get 5% off all DVD and CD duplication jobs. Online, affordablesound.com, or call them up, 512-459-459. 5253. And support comes from Voice and Exit, maximizing human flourishing through radical innovation. Tickets on sale now. Get 10% off with promo code FREEDOM, June 21st at Austin Music Hall. Get yours, voiceandexit.com. In the news, less than a week after Vermont Governor Pete Shumlin signed a bill requiring labeling of genetically modified ingredients, the Grocery Manufacturers Association has announced their intention to sue the state. The GMA stated the government has no compelling interest in labeling GM foods because they pose no risk to human health or the environment. Vermont Attorney General Bill Sorrell said the state is ready to fight the lawsuit. The Vermont bill created a $1.5 million defense fund in anticipation of lawsuits. A new study from the Harvard School of Public Health provides further evidence that a specific class of insecticides are harming honeybee colonies. Lead author Chen Ting Lu, Associate Professor of Environmental Exposure Biology at HSPH, examined the health of 18 bee colonies in central Massachusetts from October of 2012 through April 2013. Well, they found that even at low levels, the pesticides are endangering the colonies, especially during cold winters. The study was published in the Bulletin of Insectology. People in Europe can now ask Google to clear their search engines of sensitive information, reports Reuters. The ruling came after a man complained to the Spanish Data Protection Agency that an auction notice of his repossessed home on Google's search results infringed his privacy. Advocates of free expression, along with supporters of privacy rights, argued that people have the right to be forgotten. They should be able to have their digital footprint deleted. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from The Cory Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock central at CoreyMooreShow.com. And support comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. They don't feed the banks by taking credit cards, but you can bet they take Bitcoin. Online, rrbi.co, or by phone, 800-874-9760. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, May 14, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Your Liberty Beat news now continues. 22 hospital workers in Orlando, Florida have been asked to stay home after being exposed to a man with Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, otherwise known as MERS. The first U.S. case occurred after a Middle Eastern man traveled to the U.S. MERS usually only occurs in Saudi Arabia or the Middle East. The virus begins with a flu-like fever and cough, but can quickly progress to shortness of breath, pneumonia, and death. One-third of those who develop symptoms die from the virus. Two of the workers are showing flu-like symptoms. One of them has been hospitalized. He would have been the first inmate put to death following the botched execution of an Oklahoma inmate. Instead, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals has stayed the execution of Robert Campbell, who was scheduled to be put to death Tuesday night in Texas. CBS News reports the court's decision stems from remaining questions pertaining to Campbell's intellectual disability. 
The court's ruling states that Campbell and his attorneys have not had a fair opportunity to develop Campbell's claim of ineligibility for the death penalty. The Associated Press has reported that Vice President Joe Biden's son, Hunter, will be joining the board of a gas company in Ukraine. On Tuesday, it was announced that Hunter Biden will head the legal department of Bursima Holdings. The United States is seeking ways to lessen Ukraine's energy dependence on Russia. Vice President Biden has been a vocal advocate for reducing Ukraine's energy dependence. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Central Texas Gunworks home of one of the first Bitcoin ATMs in the country, where you can buy and sell Bitcoin. Visit the ATM at 321 West Ben White Boulevard, number 203. And support comes from Cabo Bob's, non-GMO chips, homemade tortillas, and no high fructose corn syrup in anything. Online, CaboBob's.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, May 14, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. From the admission of Ant Colony 00008256.7 KLN 00067X into the Union in 1897 to the day in 1817 when embarrassed construction workers realized they put the Erie Canal in the wrong place. The Onion looks back at This Week in History. On August 5, 1962, Nelson Mandela was jailed until 1990, becoming fully rehabilitated through the South African penal system. And thanks to the services provided to him while imprisoned, emerged from jail a successful politician and internationally revered symbol of peace. Mandela's record of overcoming hardships and moving South Africa beyond its formidable racial struggles is a lasting testament to South Africa's correctional facilities and prove that the penal system, small cells, demeaning work duties, and minimal rations are exactly the tools needed for a prisoner to truly become a reformed citizen. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We are kicking off the third hour of the program, taking your calls about whatever's on your mind. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We will continue the t- uh, 30 things that you should stop doing to yourself here in a little bit. Uh, Brett is with us from the School Sucks Project, and you can go to schoolsucksproject.com to get more of Brett. So yeah. much more. So much more. Uh, our, uh, I encourage people to check out our most recent episode. Uh, it's called "Where Do White People Come From," hmm. and it's in our <laughs> yeah. It's a good title. It's in our uh, Renegade History course that we've been doing, and uh, it traces the story of Irish, Italian, and Jewish immigrants and how they all came to America at different times. They wanted to do their own things, have their own cultures. And how they got assimilated. Are you going to be producing your show at Porkfest this year? I'm not going to be at Porkfest, <gasps> so unfortunately. Are you um, out of town or something? Yeah, or yeah, not, you're not boycotting the event? No, 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 absolutely okay. not. Pork, Porkfest is a, a wonderful time. Okay. Anybody anywhere near here should go if they can. Sorry to hear uh, you're going to miss it. That's a bummer. Yeah, it is a bummer. But go to schoolsucksproject.com. Get more of Brett there. There's video. There's audio. There's a forum as well. There's a forum. We got a Facebook group that's kind of taking over our forum at this point, but people can Horror find out more. forums. I feel so yeah. bad for the forums. I still have a warm spot in my heart. I continue to run two forums on my websites. Uh, there's one on the Free Talk Live uh, site. There's another one on Free Keen and the Shire Society. And man, I just I'm just kind of running it for the legacy's sake. For the for the few hardcores that are still going to the forum. There yeah. are, there aren't many of them. You know, my site, uh, I built it to have a lot of the function, obviously scaled down, but to have a lot of the functionality of Facebook. Mm -hmm. So people can go there. They can create profiles. They can make friends with other people. They can start their own groups. Does that work? You know, because I've seen these sites before, right? They've got like BuddyPress for WordPress, yeah, yeah. and there's these different things you can plug in. You can kind of, you can have your own social bookmarking site. And whenever I see that, I just think, why? 
Why re, you know, recreate something that people already have? That's right. You know, pe- it's there for them when they're ready for it. Like lots of so complaints it's not about Facebook. What you're <laughs> well, uh, uh, thousands of people have made accounts, and there's there was uh, when the site was newer a very active uh, forum. I, I even experimented with uh, the thing you have, where people can post their own links and people can vote them up yep. or down. So all those things have been there. And yeah, Facebook just has a kind of gravity. It's a much larger internet planet. It's half the internet. Yeah, than uh, than schoolsucksproject.com. So people were excited about it at first, and then they're like, yeah, but Facebook. And they, they kind of yeah. gravitate back there. There was uh, the Free Agents Project as well that happened a few years ago. Jason Talley, one of the activists up here, created that. And there was a whole lot of promotion and publicity and i thought it was a a cool thing and one of the aspects of it was this kind of it's a social network of libertarians and there was there were some good things that he'd come up with some incentives to try to get people to get involved with the site but it just didn't pan out you know there were people that joined it but there wasn't much more beyond that that really went anywhere and i don't know well, what Facebook, can you do? Facebook is getting a little heavy-handed with some people lately yeah, so they, they almost blocked our account tonight yeah Apparently somebody got offended by one of the photos that was one of the the classic Vietnam uh, you know, black and white photographs was posted to our Facebook account with uh, the naked child running down the the street. Yeah, uh, that apparently was offensive to someone. Well, uh, this it was historical by, piece. It was posted by a manager. I don't want to say it was posted to our Facebook page. I mean, you know, like, it was posted to Free Talk Live's Facebook. Wasn't yeah, but it, it wasn't just somebody posting a picture to our page. Oh, right. Someone who runs the page. I'm sorry if that wasn't made clear. The, yeah, they can't. I don't think they can ban your page for s- what a listener posts. On I it. just want to be clear. Yeah, thank you for that. So l- let's talk about this talk radio code. You touched on it briefly in the last hour, Brett. But first, we have Tom in New Hampshire. He's on Free Talk Live. Tom. Uh, yeah, it's about the European court there telling Google to remove a link. And, uh, you know, this touches on something uh, from my own line of work where I run a number of websites where I put public information. I started out doing genealogy information. And various government uh, institutions have been changing the rules of that game Now, the Utah legislature, for example, passed a law saying that the date of birth shall no longer be published on the Utah voter list, and if you have the Utah voter list, you're not allowed to disclose dates of birth from it. Uh, So even though they already sold it to me as public information. So what I did was I changed that website. Rather than start a fascinating legal battle, I just changed that entire website to just one page that says, oh, by the way, you can download the whole thing off the Wayback Machine, or it's still on the Wayback Machine, <laughs> page by page, or you can go to Indie Media UK, the British Indie Media website. Good, They got the, a British domain name, good luck, federal government trying to, to mess with them, and it could very well turn out to be uh, gravitate toward or evolve toward uh, the way child pornography is handled, and that is even if the web server and the producers are in another country, if you download it, then you get busted in the United States for downloading it in the United States. But uh, there's all kinds of uh, Wayback Machine type of uh, personal history uh, that can be compiled. The Florida voter list, for example, gives your name, your date of birth, the home address, your sex, uh, and uh if you change your, if a woman is Mary Smith one day, and then she's Mary Jones uh, a few months later, and she's living with uh, Mr. Jones, okay, then I mean you can compile a, uh, a history on somebody because their voter ID number stays the same throughout the month. They come up with a new list every month. It's five dollars every time. Mm-hmm. So you can, if uh, gee, uh, you're Robert Smith now. And a few months ago, you were Roberta Smith, and you were female. Hmm, I wonder what happened. And then you can find their uh, various Wayback Machines, but, you know... So what are you getting at here, Tom? I'm a little confused. You're pointing out that there's all this information available. You're concerned, as as we were last night with the Google uh, case in Europe, where European High Court, the European High Court, has uh, ruled that Google will now have to remove links upon request. I'm not really sure what you're trying to put together here, though, with, with your call. I don't know where they're going to go uh, with that. 
in this country, but I do know that the uh, George Orwell novel in 1984 uh, has uh, similar stuff going on where they're, you know, trying to change history. Sanitize they things, had, sure. Um, they uh, searched everybody's house and destroyed all the books, and uh, they controlled the history. And in, on one passage there, uh, Winston Smith was instructed to change a newspaper article from the history because it refers to people who uh, never existed anymore. Okay, who now officially never existed, and so now you yeah, have it's to it's spooky the what article. they're doing in Europe. And thank you for the call tonight, Tom. I, I appreciate believe it. the quote is: "Whoever controls the present controls the past, and okay. whoever controls the past controls the future." I, Sounds I could, good. No, no, no. That's, that's, is that an Orwell quote? It's or from it? 1984, and I think I'm mixing it up a little bit. But the idea is the people in power now have the the ability to influence the past. Right. right. They write the history books. And if they can control that past and make things disappear, like when George Bush stepped up to a podium in 2003 and said, you know, the United States has only ever gone to war to as liberators. He said that. Mm-hmm. He <laughs> said that. You know, and people were ignorant enough to not be completely outraged by that. Uh, well, they've been enough time in government school, and that's what they were taught. Yeah, uh, you know, absolutely. You didn't, didn't see that there was an empire built um, over time. And by the way, we had uh, caller Wit call in in the past uh, here and talk about the evil empire of Japan. And I spent some time doing some research on this because he he just harps on it every single time he calls. And uh, I mean, I think it's I, I think that it's. It really just doesn't make any sense when you're dealing with a world where uh, Japan got beaten beat in World War II, where England at the time was controlling India, um, was a, a full-on empire, that Japan was essentially late to the table in empire building. Um, ja- well, Japan and Germany and the United States the United were States. all sort of like the second wave of imperial. Indeed. Yeah. And, and so to call Japan particularly evil for its uh, participation in what every single one of these countries, these would-be empires and empires were doing, I just don't think it's particularly fair. We will come back with you if you call in toll-free. The number is 855-453-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Unless you say the evil empire of Germany and the evil empire of the United States. We'll come back and you can take control of the airwaves on Free Talk Live. Safety, safety, safety. I'm saying it three times. Studies show you need to hear something three times to remember it. So remember, safety, safety, safety is important to me, me, me. That's why I love Granger. Granger has the products to help keep our facilities safe and people safer. Say it with me, kid. Safety, safety, safety from Granger, Granger, Granger. When you think safety, think Granger. Get it? Got it? Good. Call clickgranger.com slash safety or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Are you planning a vacation and trying to make your whole family happy? I want a hotel with convenient locations and continental breakfast. It better have internet. Don't forget, we're on a budget. America's Best Value Inn has you covered with all this and more at most of our 1,000 hotels in North America. Plus, join the Value Club for instant room discounts, upgrades, and late checkout. Yes, I can sleep in. Visit AmericasBestValueInn.com and make even your grumpiest teenager happy. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. 
the successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the Liberty Media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything that you want right here toll-free. It's still to come, the 30 things to stop doing to yourself. We'll continue the list at number 10. Uh, we're going up in the list. We still have a good 21 uh, <laughs> remaining. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And want to also let you know, if you are a business owner who's thinking about, has been thinking about Bitcoin, accepting Bitcoin, and actually in the news today, eBay is thinking about accepting Bitcoin. That yep. was a headline over at Coindesk this morning. So, I don't know if you can still get a news story out of it, but if you are a business um, in your town, you're liable to get a news. It's possible. Certainly in the past, you've been able to get news stories. I would say if there hasn't been a local business takes Bitcoin news story, that could be you. Or, um, you know, the particular type of business that you are or whatever, you might be able to make a, a business uh, story, get a story out of it from a local reporter. And it's as easy as going to blockchain.com and downloading the app onto either a tablet or a smartphone and using that in your business. Uh, you mm -hmm. pretty much have to have a physical bit business here. And this is blockchain.com, which is, you know, sort of a little spinoff of blockchain.info, which is one of the largest Bitcoin sites on the internet, arguably the largest. And, um, you know, they make it easier for you to get a Bitcoin wallet. Anybody can go there and get a Bitcoin wallet. But for a business, you don't want the same uh, interactivity that uh, with a wallet as uh, for, you know, the made available to your employees. So there are no terms of service, no ID requirements, no costs, nothing. You just go download the app from Google Play and you're started. It's blockchain.com. All right, so let's get into this talk radio code thing. We've been teasing it for half an hour at this point. You talked about it briefly in the last hour. Someone had called, and you went off on the conservatives. Brett, you would, were saying that these conservative yeah. clone talk show hosts have a certain racist code that they use. And okay. you were going to tell us more about that. Now, maybe code is that maybe I'm borrowing that, as I said before, from liberal talkers who say that this is there's everything is racist code on the right. But there's actually some truth to that. And the explanation that I was giving, in case anyone just joined us, is for a long time the left mobilized voters by claiming they were the party of the downtrodden, the less fortunate, the minorities. We really care about you people because mm -hmm. the intellectuals who, you know, kind of move the platform and the talking points of that party said, these people are dumb. They'll believe us. I mean, that, that's the strategy. You want to find the dumbest people and have them, you know, be the momentum sure. uh, for the party uh, or for voters. So uh, on the right, the, the Republicans followed suit starting in the, the late 70s, early 80s, when they started to align themselves with the religious right. 
um, because they thought the same thing about the religious life. These people believe the world's 6,000 yeah. years old, so you know they'll believe anything that we say. Uh, and because most of those people are down south, what became embedded in the conservative talking points was this racism. Well, there's this southern strategy that's really sort of inarguable um, among re the Republicans back in the early 80s. Yeah. Essentially, they took the Dixiecrats, which were bigoted Democrats, and right. turned them into bigoted Republicans um, You know, about the time that Reagan came on. Yeah. Now, I don't know how they go about doing this, but there was never really sort of any overt racism they use religion. that I saw. They use religion. They made. They but made Christians aren't aren't bigoted. I mean, churches are mixed all the time. No, but they, in in the South, is what I'm saying. I went to church in the South. Lots of black people in churches there. Okay, but there's different parts of the South. I, indeed, I have not been to all of them. All right, but so it's an interesting question. How did the, I mean, the Democrats in the 20th century were the party of the Ku Klux Klan and war, hmm. that, right? That, well, How no, did no, that no, get— uh, this, uh, this, is, this will not stand. No, the fact is Republicans have been the party of war for as long as Republican for the, the whole 20th century. Who pushed R Woodrow Wilson into war? The Republicans did. I'm sorry. Yes, you can say that Woodrow Wilson was it, president it, with, in World War I. You can say FDR was president in World War II. You can, but the fact— Fact is the uh, World War Two debatable, um, but World War One well, not debatable. Okay, well, both Wilson and to a lesser extent FDR were both basically being run by a guy named Colonel Edward Mendel House, who okay. did not have e e either party, uh, you know, loyalty. Yeah, he I was remember. just an out and out statist in every way possible. So, um, yeah, I mean, I would think both parties are really the party of war, but. Um, you know, it was very much as far on, on the executive level, as far as the executive level is concerned, in the 20th century, a Democrat thing. And you're right. There could have been congressional Republican pressure. I'm not, I'm not going to fight you on that. But it, And then we have the Ku Klux Klan. But now when we talk about racism and we talk about, uh, you know, a really aggressive foreign policy, since the days of Ronald Reagan, that has clearly been a Republican thing, while the left has staked out more of an anti-war position, especially during the administration of yep. well, uh, the, George W. Bush. Republicans lie about uh, smaller government. Democrats lie about less war. There's no doubt um, that that goes in play. And I wouldn't argue with you that um, that the bigots, uh, whatever, you know, whatever organization the bigots might belong to, tend to vote Republican. I don't know why particularly. So for let me let me point uh, point a few things out. So you had in 2012 for a brief time, about as brief as Tim Pawlenty and uh, Michelle Bachman and uh, the variety of people that were trotted past us as the number one um, Republican candidate at the time. You had yeah. Herman Cain. Yeah. Now I'll grant you, he was a little weird with his nine 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 thing, but and and like he just seemed completely uninformed and you know, incapable of doing the job. But for about six weeks, he was the presumptive nominee, you know? He was the guy that was going to win. And now you have this doctor, and he's his name is not uh, coming to my mind um, off the top of my head, but uh, you've got this doctor that's, uh, you know, one of the top people being talked about for the Republican nomination. Big critic of Obamacare, yeah, Benjamin the, something. Uh, yeah, I can't remember his name. Okay. Uh, um, First time I've heard of him. But I don't pay attention yeah, to these you things. Don't. Carson? Benjamin Carson? Yeah, it sounds right. Yeah. Um, and so anyway, this guy, oh, and he's black, and uh, Herman Cain was black. These He'll two, cure America. Well, I can see it now. You know, actually, the guy, look, you know, everything I've heard him say sounds pretty good. I, you know, I don't have a particular problem with the dude. And, and that's the thing is, is that I don't think that even the majority of Republicans are bigoted. I think that the code is so cryptic. That the code slides by people like many most people in the Republican Party. All right, right. I want to know what the code is. I okay. mean, I want specific so examples. Let's pick an area. Do you want to do Muslims? Do you want to do immigration? Or do you care. want to do Obama? Pick one. Uh, let's go with Muslims. Okay, uh, I think that one speaks for for itself. That it was so easily to, so easy for them to. Uh, align this weird foreign religion of brown people with all things bad in the world from you know 2001 on, and it even started. So you're just saying that. that because they're uh, they're 
criticizing the Muslim religion that that's race that's the suggestion is that there's racism there. I, I think there's better examples with with Obama and immigration, but yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's easy for them to latch onto things mm-hmm. when race or or cultural or religious difference is involved. So what did they latch onto about Obama? Right, because you can't say I don't like him because he's black. The birth certificate. The birth certificate. Now, what is the birth certificate all about? Is it really saying I don't like this guy because he's different? But it was this. It was it was kind of this code. There's something mm. about him that is alien, that is foreign. Right. You can see it that way. But his birth certificate didn't look like mine. There was this thing online that looked new and I, I would have just posted my birth certificate. Alright, we'll come back with more here in moments. 855 450 free. I think you might be onto something there, Brett. Uh, there's more on the way. You can share your thoughts. If you owe the IRS back taxes, listen carefully. Sweeping changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever eliminate their tax debts once and for all. And now, I can help you reduce or eliminate your tax debts and end your tax nightmare. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. I've helped thousands of people reduce and eliminate tax debts they couldn't pay. And after more than 30 years of experience dealing with the IRS, I can tell you there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. And with the IRS's new policies, it's easier than ever to put your tax debt behind you once and for all. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. Call 800-346-6829. Learn how I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. A congressman recently revealed that legislation totaling 2,900 pages and involving more than $1 trillion was available to members of Congress for less than 48 hours to study and consider. That's over 60 pages of legislation per hour. Do you think anyone read the entire bill? I'm Jim Babka with DownsizedDC.org. Consider a proposal buried in a 3,200-page, $388 billion bill, which would have empowered committee chairmen or their agents to examine Americans' tax returns. When this horrible provision came to light, no one claimed to know how it got into the bill. One congressman questioned said, I didn't write it, I didn't approve it, I wasn't even consulted. If your attorney represented you this way, he might be disbarred. But this is how Congress represents you every day. That's why DownsizedDC.org has created the Read the Bills Act. You can force Congress to read their bills before they pass them at DownsizedDC.org. There's a treasure hunt going on at MathGate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So, learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, MathGate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So, connect to MathGate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait, others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to MathGate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at MathGate.info. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. 
You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can take control of the airwaves here toll free at 855 450 free. You can also join us online. You can connect via Skype. Send your contact request first. It will be approved, and you'll be easily able to connect to us on Skype via username lrn.fm. You can, of course, join us over at freetalklive.com. You can go get a free pound of coffee at coffee.freetalklive.com. There we have BuzzBox Coffee, and BuzzBox Coffee is shade-grown, organic, and top 1% grade Arabica coffee. This is the best of the best coffee. And if you stay, stay on the subscription program there, through which you get your free pound, you'll continue to get uh, delicious coffee. You can sort of change it up. There's two types of coffee that you can get free, and then after that, there's lots of different options. You can kind of change it up and get some of the best coffee out there. What's different about BuzzBox is what makes it uh, important to me. And the reason that they're on the show is that they care about the people that they do business with. They take care of their farmers. They have uh, loan programs to get people in their coffee co-op. They grow sustainably so that uh, the, you know, the land where they are, uh, where they're growing doesn't get depleted and then they move on to another location and the farmers don't have anything to do, get uh, left in poverty. And they also make it possible for Free Talk Live to offer a micro loan for every 10 people that sign up to get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. And thank you to everybody who does. Um, for every 10 new people, we're able to offer another micro loan and change another family's lives. So go get a free pound. Try it out at coffee.freetalklive.com. If you like it, continue to get your coffee delivered through coffee.freetalklive.com because now your coffee problem's taken care of. Coffee.freetalklive.com. We're going to continue here with your calls and thoughts. We've got Dr. Jones on the line in Turkey. Ooh. You're on Free Talk Live, Dr. Jones. Hi. I just wanted to add in a few points about uh, what happened to the Republican Party and how they went so, I would say, hardcore, bigoted, and uh, they speak in code, etc. My mother is a white. She grew up in the South. She married two black men. My stepfather actually was the second black person to graduate from the Naval Academy. However, he is a unabashed uh, Rush Limbaugh supporter, pro-military. And by the 1990s, my mother was uh, talking like she listened to Rush Limbaugh all the time. My mother blamed what happened in New Orleans on a black mayor, and, and she speaks in code literally about, well, the Democrats this, they that, they that. You know, I explained Ray Nagin was a Republican who uh, switched parties to get elected in a predominantly uh, Democratic area. She either didn't believe it, didn't care. You know, George Bush could do no wrong. Uh, the Muslims this, the Muslims that. Uh, she's just a bigot. And, uh, you know, I, it's sad, but that's how it is. And and my mother's been around uh, people in country clubs who have a lot more money than she does, but, but see, she one, thinks herself. One thing class. about what you're saying, you, these are really these are really good points, but the thing that somebody like your mother has, they always have something to fall back on. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not that they're Muslim. It's it's a threat to the national security. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not that they're black. It's that they're eating up all this this welfare. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not that they're Mexican. It's just that we need to have secure borders. Well, there's, well even if you catch somebody in a, in a blatant racist statement, you know, they use the N-word. Well, then they'll often back out and they'll say, whoa, whoa, whoa. There's N-words and then there's black people. I mean, like, there's always... You, you, I guess you don't get this stuff up in New England. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm familiar with the. Okay. Yeah. There's there's always there's always a place to step back to once you're confronted on um you know whatever mm. whatever the point is. But I I think that many of the points that Republicans make are valid when they're ta- when they're taken as you know as they're said. Like for instance, uh, I do think that welfare is disempowering to the family, and that you could make the argument that many families in um, in many communities have been destroyed because of welfare now well, what, can, go right ahead uh, just run quickly about uh, mexican immigration my, my wife's grandmother came to the united states from mexico uh, before 1965 you know before there was any actually immigration limitation right. on mexican americans and my mother with a straight face 
said to my wife and to my wife's mother, if she could stand at the border with a gun, she would, and she would shoot at anyone who came up, tried to come across the border. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, and then I, I said, I called my mother out, and she was kind of horrified. Oh, oh, I didn't mean that. I didn't say this in it. But when we come to the point of welfare and disempowering, I'm sorry, you know, uh, George Bush's family didn't suffer from welfare. They're not di- uh, unempowered, disempowered because of all the corporate welfare they received in their life, as mm. well as many other Warren Buffett, well, etc. Corporate, we corporate can- welfare doesn't doesn't take the father out of the home. Um, you know, corporate welfare just makes a company dependent on um, the government and government contracts and largess and things like that. So they become dependent. However, it's not disempowering in that same way. Again, it's still in. Um, I mean, I would challenge that in the level of if getting money from government helps rich people, then I want as much money as I can get from government because I want to be rich just like they are. And if if when they turn around and say, "I got mine," screw you. It's a, it's a parallel with the immigration thing. You know, my mother's European, she, and she wants to say with a straight face, "It's all good. It was all reasonable. It's all acceptable." And we're related to Francis Scott Key. That was all fine that we came in that time, and now people want to come now. She says, no, 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 it's bad, bad, bad. So, you know, it's, it's just hypocrisy. All but the way that's around. always existed. I mean, uh, we uh, talked about this recently on, on my show, and, and we talked about this in this show tonight, how these institutions or these cultural norms are set up, and they get this momentum behind them, or they get this gravity or this weight to them, and then people just keep changing the justification. All of this anti-immigrant stuff goes back to what was mainstream science a hundred years ago, and it was it was yeah. scientific yeah. racism, yeah. right? Yeah. So they were using in the 19 teens when they wrote the first immigration legislation directed towards Europeans that I, that I know of anyway, towards Southern Italians. They were using these books about how people from Southern Italy ha- were descended from Africans, that they were part black and therefore they were inferior. They, they were they were telling stories, and I'm not I'm talking in academia. Naturalists and and biologists were writing books about how Irish people were the missing link between human beings and simians. Mm. Like, that was mainstream science 100 years ago, and government acted on that science through, like, the um, the Emergency Quota Act in the 1920s, which was uh, limiting immigration from Southern and, and Eastern Europe. And then as soon, as soon as that happens, it's another group. And then today, it's Mexicans, because those institutions and, and that cultural weight exists. It's not going away until people actually think about it, but people... Don't think about things. But that's, I agree with what you're saying. Well, that's not what I hear Dr. Jones saying. What I hear Dr. Jones saying is, is that people have been bad in the past. Some people have been bad in the past and benefited from government largess. So therefore, we should continue to use government largess in, no, on no, into the future. I'm, no, no, no. That's not my point at okay, all. Okay, great. Again, it's about the hypocrisy. My point is the hypocrisy. There's my, a lot of it. Again, my, my – stepfather was in the Navy for a career, and I told him with a straight face, and I told my mother, he's a welfare king, right? I mean, and and they don't understand it. They they don't have a clue of, well, what do you mean? I was in the Navy. I, I did a job. I was like, no, you're part of an empire. You're part of a military. You killed people in Vietnam. You can be proud of it all you want, except you just destroyed people. You, in the military, you break things and kill people. You're not building anything. Uh, I make a last point, and then Thanks. I'm going to go... I know you guys uh, get whatever sponsors you can, and it's really great and all that. But you know, World Vision. Um, you might want to look up the World Vision and, and Mind Control and, and some other things. I, I, they might be doing good with the micro loans, but I, I think you might be concerned about World Vision and Mind uh, Control. And, yeah, yeah. Look up World Vision and Mind Control and Bush family. There's, there's a lot of information on it. I, I did a lo- I did as much research as I could on World Vision before we took them on um, and put them on the Facebook page and had had the uh, listeners tear them up as best they could and um, they weren't able to come up with much. So I'll you know I'll I'll, I'll do the okay. search you're looking for. Thanks but. for the okay. call tonight, Doctor Jones. Eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. We'll come back with more. You can share your thoughts in the remaining moments of Free Talk Live, which are coming up here shortly. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. More Free Talk Live coming up.
May I have your attention, please? If you are trying to lose weight, we need your help. We're AF Plus, and we have too much product and too few participants in our nationwide risk-free trial. If you need to lose 30 pounds or more and would like to participate, call now, 1-800-967-9495. AF Plus is an amazing, proven breakthrough in weight loss, a once-daily capsule that can help you lose weight in days. It's also one of the healthiest ways to lose weight because each capsule contains natural ingredients, including green tea extract. You'll boost your metabolic heart rate, allowing you to shed pounds in days with just one capsule a day. Be among the first to call for your risk-free trial. Again, we have too many risk-free trials and too few participants. If you would like to lose 30 pounds or more by taking just one all-natural capsule a day, call now to participate in this nationwide risk-free trial. 1-800-967-9495. That number again is 1-800-967-9495. Gentlemen, in search of a million-dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My Magic Mud, the fluoride-free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste, and safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com I'm a very bad man, and I'm outside your house. I see you've got an alarm. Outstanding. Because houses with alarms always have the coolest stuff. Unless you've got a door devil reinforcing your door frame. I'll kick your fancy door just like any other door. And I'll be gone before the police even get the call. Don't worry. I'll try not to make a mess. (laughs) Door devils are available at participating Ace Hardware stores and locksmiths. Or visit doordevil.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Have you ever wanted to move to the land of Libpair, Libertarian Paradise, where there's fun for everyone that doesn't initiate force on others, fun for the kids, parties for the adults, buy and sell in silver or Bitcoin, scenic hikes and gun shoots, speeches to educate us all? The Porcupine Freedom Festival is Libpair in the White Mountains of New Hampshire for a week this summer, June 22nd to 29th. Get your tickets now before there's no more room. Porkfest, the event of a lifetime. Porkfest.com. That's P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can join us online at freetalklive.com. You can interact with a variety of features on our website, including archives that go back to all the way to 2006, toward the end of 2006. All of it free. You download at your leisure at freetalklive.com. And you can meet Free Talk Live 
in real life coming up here in just over a month from now. We're going to be broadcasting live every night at the Porcupine Freedom Festival. It's happening June 22nd through the 29th in the beautiful White Mountains of northern New Hampshire at a campground called Rogers Campground. This place has been for the last several years, and it is just so much fun to come to Porkfest. There are over 1,500 people likely who will be there this year, if last year's numbers are any indication of what will happen this year. And there's things, everything from family events to uh, do-it-yourself kind of seminars, speeches, panel discussions. Uh, there's going to be all kinds of fun stuff, you know, camping kind of games and things like that. It's just a blast to be around people who care about freedom. That's what the Porcupine Freedom Festival is all about. It's not just any camping festival. It's a festival of liberty-minded people, people many of whom are members of the Free State Project or participants in the Free State Project, others who are considering making a move to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project. Many of those folks will be at the Porcupine Freedom Festival, and you should be there as well if you can make it up. Even if you can't make it for the whole week, you should come up for as much of it as you can June 22nd through the 29th porkfest.com that's p o r c f e s t.com and we will look forward to seeing you there you can by the way buy the tickets online for porkfest between now and the end of this month after that you'll have to wait and actually buy them in person at the event and you're going to pay more if you wait so just go ahead and take care of it now porkfest p o r c f e s t.com all right are we ready, uh, ready to get back to the list to number 10 really this on is the, happening on How the list this? of 30 things to stop doing to yourself from lifebuzz.com. Number 10 is stop exclusively looking to others for happiness. If you're not happy with who you are on the inside, you won't be happy in a long-term relationship with anyone else either. You have to create stability in your own life first before you can share it with someone else. Yeah, and if you don't do this, you're kind of useless to other people, you know? So you there really isn't going to be that reciprocation, you know? Like, hey, you, make me, I'm having problems, make me happy, right? Big you, problem. Yeah, you can't give much back to them if you're not doing well yourself. But a lot so. of people seek this. A lot of people believe that they need to have this partner, that they have, that this, this person completes me, you know? Like this idea that you're not whole, before you meet this other person. And so there's that kind of very needy idea that goes into that. And I think that's very destructive and, and dangerous. Well, I do. Th I, I get the whole idea you're not whole until you meet this other person thing. I mean, people have different personalities and those personalities mesh to some extent. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, Ian, you and I, um, you know, as business partners, we have uh, I have a tendency to be to to want to do things quickly to make decisions quickly and and yeah. uh, you know just let's do it come on let's go and you're like you know you never want to do anything new um, no 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 the the race goes to the one that continues to the end you're always talking about the tortoise not the hare slow and steady slow, slow and, and steady, steady wins, wins the race, the race. That, he said it a hundred times and you know I mean does that in the process what that has done is that that has saved us from me you know, doing some crazy things. And also it's had me drag you kicking and screaming into the future a few times too. So yeah, I think that you can have your personalities matched without you being needy at the same time. Well, I think that what you're describing there is somebody who compliments another person. It's one thing to see somebody as uh, a benefit to have someone in your life who you value for certain reasons. And you're a very valuable person for a variety of different reasons, Mark. Um, but to say that I would not be a whole person without you is to suggest that you are that. critical. Well, that's what I'm talking about here. The idea that another person is the reason why you're happy. Uh, that If your happiness counts on the existence of that other person in your life, at some point you're going to be very, very disappointed. right? Like that person yeah. could die. They could be hit by a bus. They could you know, move away or whatever. They could decide they don't like you anymore. And uh, and then what? All of a sudden you're going to have a miserable experience because you put all of this weight on that one person when what this article is suggesting here is that you need to be whole inside yourself and then let other people enhance your life. Like, you know, it's an enhancement to have other people who we can connect with and who can do things that benefit us or can do things that we can't do uh, very well. But that doesn't mean that you you, you shouldn't feel whole without that person. Yeah. You can scale this, too, and I can think of two examples. One is childhood fame, and the other one is high school football in the South, right? Okay. Where you uh, basically build a lifestyle around pleasing other people, mm. right, and getting approval from other people. 
Um, football in the South, in, in a lot of places, is like its own religion, you know? And high school football players are like professional football players. People take it that seriously. And eventually, those people grow up, they're not in high school anymore, and they're not in the NFL, and a lot of people really struggle with that. Even people who make it to college uh, D1 schools or or the NFL, they, they still feel like they exist to please people. Mm-hmm. We know what happens over and over again with child stars who get all of this approval. Oh, you're so wonderful. You're so wonderful. And, then, and you're so cute. And then one day it's all gone. It just evaporates. Yeah. And a lot of them really struggle in adulthood because they've never had their uh, an identity that's about doing what they want for themselves, self-actualization, intrinsic motivation. It's always about the high five or the applause. Yeah, I think that it's very difficult for people to get a lot of uh, sort of outward, um, you know, bolstering of their personality, and then it goes away. Um, you're talking about high school football and, and child stars. I think this is uh, this could be true for people who uh, are, you know, devastatingly attractive because over time that goes away too and suddenly the world doesn't treat you the same Mm -hmm. yeah yeah another aspect of this is the idea that uh, it says you're you have to create stability in your own life first before you can share it with someone else and you have to be happy on the inside or you won't be happy in a long-term relationship in fact what will happen is likely if you are, um, you know, damaged in some way that you don't believe in yourself and you are angry at the world or for whatever reason you, you're not satisfied with yourself and who you are, you're likely to attract the wrong person. Like you put out a certain vibration into, into life. You put out certain uh, attractive features to people who may have similar issues as you. And maybe you aren't even attracting that right person because you yourself aren't a whole person. You're not solid with who you are, and so therefore you'll get other damaged individuals into your life hoping that they'll be that thing that completes you when in point of fact they're also damaged. And not that there's anything wrong with that. People have their issues, but uh, that they're also damaged and things don't work out the way you expected them to or the way that you hoped that they would. And then when that person who uh, entered your life goes away for whatever reason because you weren't right for one another or people change or whatever the reason is, they go away. There's that hole again. You feel like you need it filled with uh, with somebody. So you go and you replace it with another person who, lo and behold, has the same issues that the last person did. I mean, who hasn't seen people with these relationship issues? Oh, sure. Yeah. And I think a lot of it comes from people who are not happy with who they are and they're looking to complete themselves in that other person. And then they find out that that other person isn't, you know, as everything they thought they were. Oh, and, and this is why you see the uh, the hopping from one relationship to the next. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, many people never take uh, time to you know take inventory of themselves, evaluate how things went in the relationship. Just just beep up, beep up, beep up from one to the next to the next to the next. And I, I think it's difficult to learn anything that way too. Yeah, knots. Some people even have knots in their relationships, meaning they've kind of been setting up the next one before one even ends. You oh know? yeah, sure. I mean, you know, you don't want to, you don't want that day or two in between. But that's those, those are demoralizing. Right. Right. So make yourself the best person you possibly can. Be as whole of a person as you can, and as happy with yourself as you can. And then maybe you'll be more likely to attract someone who's like that and have a healthier relationship. Let's go to Ames in West Virginia on listening to WVTS, I believe. Go ahead, Ames. You're on Free Talk Live. Yeah, it's Amos. Oh, it's hey, Amos. Amos. I apologize. Yeah, I, yeah, that's okay. I just. Yeah, be at peace with yourself. You know, that's accept yourself as you are. You know, absolutely. Uh, be, your own, be your own person. Uh, the other thing about football in the South, I would, I would, with high schools, I would certainly extend that to colleges. Sure, it's yeah. Almost like, it's almost like a religion mm. uh, in the South, and probably even into the Midwest, maybe some other areas of the uh, country as well. And uh, you know, those people are uh, celebrated as uh, as kind of gods and. Uh, it seems like a lot of the college football you see today, you have a bunch of fat men drinking, this on the college level, sitting in stands, uh, mostly white men, watching uh, black men running around on a, on a football field, and they're living vicariously. A lot of these guys never even played football themselves. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and it's, it's kind of like the old plantation system where oh, wow. in, in the South, the... 
the uh, blacks were used for boxing uh, events, you know, to entertain the plantation masters and so forth. Interesting conclusion. Tonight. I appreciate the call, Amos. Thank you for okay, making it this bye evening. Bye. And we are out of time for tonight, but you can join Brett on his website, schoolsucksproject.com, and join us over at freetalklive.com. We are through 10 of the 30 things. That's nice. Stop doing to yourself one third of the way through. I will pick it up probably next week. Free Talk Live. There's a- I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you to go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Who do you think Excuse you are? Excuse me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This no, is you ain't going to make it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh, my God. Unbelievable. Why are you running from me? Because you're scared of property. What am I being now? What is this? What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Should you be able to earn an honest living free from senseless government interference? The Institute for Justice thinks so. That's why we've spent years defending hard-working men and women from pointless government regulations. Nationwide, IJ has created opportunity by reducing government power. But there is still more work to be done. Visit our website today at ij.org. Let IJ take care